against the Cleveland Browns, who are 7-3. and three. I'm Merle Herman, along with George Coons and 70,000-plus fans in the big Lakefront Stadium. The Cleveland Browns will be kicking off. Seattle won the toss, is elected to receive. And here in Cleveland, they're talking about this being the most exciting football season in the 34 years of the franchise. And that is saying a lot, because you're talking about teams led by Otto Graham, by Jimmy Brown, and all the rest. Don Cockcroft will be kicking off for the Browns. And back deep for Seattle, Jeff Moore, 32, Tony Green, 34. Remember, Seattle is coming off a disastrous game against the Los Angeles Rams, going a minus seven yards total offense. They want to prove they're a much better football team than that. The Browns have won three in a row. They've had two winning streaks this year. They opened the season with four straight victories, then dropped three, then came back with a remarkable recovery, beating Cincinnati, St. Louis, and then with a big upset win over Philadelphia last week, and they're ready to take on the Seahawks, and here we go. Cockcroft hits it high, but not deep. At the 18-yard line, it is Jeff Moore. At the 30, at the 34. And down he goes, a return of 17 yards, and Jim Zorn brings his offensive unit on the field. Jim Zorn with Dan Dornick and Sherman Smith in the backfield. Jim Zorn, two for 17 last week, definitely has to improve his passing, but Jim Zorn's the type of guy that can do that and do it in a hurry. The wide receivers, 84, Sam McCollum, Steve Largent, number 80, Brian Peets, the tight end, 88. Smith, 47, Dornick, 33 of the setbacks, and they go wing. Zorn going to the air to Sherman Smith out of the backfield. He is out of bounds in the 42-yard line again of eight. Charlie Hall ran him out of bounds. And how about that one, George? No setbacks. No setbacks at all. There's no secret as to what Seattle wanted to do on that play. Let's see if the offensive line for Seattle can keep that stuff going. Nick Bebop, Tom Lynch, Yarno Newton, and August. Rod uh, Humanick, who's the offensive line coach for the Browns, likes the Lynch-Yarno combination. He considers it to be a good one in the NFL. All right, Mark Bell is now into the tight end spot as Jim Zorn runs his second play of the afternoon. Dan Dornick. Dornick gets close to the first down, got about a yard. Dick Ambrose, number 52, the middle linebacker, a five-year veteran from Virginia, is having an outstanding year, made the tackle. And here's the front four for Cleveland. Again, a new addition, Rich Dimmler, number 92, a rookie from USC, taking the place, or trying to take the place, of Jerry Shirk, out with a knee problem we'll discuss later, but he will be tested on the ground by Seattle. All right, it is a third down and a half yard to go for the Seahawks. Let's see what Zorn will do. Dornick has the first down to the 45. Dan's having an outstanding year. He last, uh, two weeks ago, on a Monday night against Atlanta, he had 122 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Lyle Alzado made the tackle. The linebacking core for the Cleveland Browns. Middle linebacker Dick Ambrose, a 12th round choice in 1975, having a banner year and leading that linebacker core. And so the Seahawks, first down, 10, wide to the right, McCullum, wide to the left, Largen to the top of the screen, and again, no setbacks. Zorn with a fake, back over the middle of Dornick, Dornick at the midfield strike, trying to regain his balance, goes down to the 48-yard line, and that could have been a much bigger gain had Tom Darden not been able to get up there to make the stop. This an eight-yard pickup. This is an amazing play. No setbacks, yet the Browns blitz. They have everybody coming. Zorn rolls to his left. He's a left-handed passer, throws across his body back to Dornick, and you'll see no linebackers there because they all shot. Dornick takes it upfield. Good chasing from behind. Clay Matthews, 57, getting there. Defensive back bringing him down for a short game. It's a second down and four after a gain of six. Left-handed friend targeted by some because of his scrambling ability. That's large and in motion back to the bottom of the screen. And it's Dan Dornick off the tackle down to the 45. And he is brought down just about at the 45-yard line by number 57. And that would be Clay Matthews, the right linebacker, the second-year man from USC, a game of three. The defensive backfield for the Cleveland Browns will be tested, no doubt. Oh, it will be tested, no doubt about it. Tom Darden. Former pro bowler not having the kind of year that he would like to have, but the defensive backfield is going to have to scramble and stay with their people to compete against Zorn. Now Zorn has a third down and one coming up. 
In fact, might even be a little bit less than that. No score here in the first quarter in Cleveland. The Browns are tied for second place in the AFC Central Division with the Houston Oilers. Both have records of 7-3. and three. Pittsburgh on the road for two weeks now in Kansas City today and San Diego next week. Pittsburgh with a record of 8-2 in the AFC Central. Third down one. Double tight end offense for Seattle. the first down. What a job he has done. This young man from Washington State, Dick Ambrose, 52, made the stop after a gain of three. Out of this formation, the Seahawks like to feature their fullback. You see him running right up the middle, and he's getting good yardage behind the blocking of Bob Newton taking on Rich Dimmler, number 92, and Mickey Sims, number 78. Good run by Dornick, but good blocking at the point of attack by the Seahawks. This is what Dornick has done so far this year. And so far this year, he not only has run the ball well, but he has been a primary target of this man, Jim Zorn, who has hit 52% of his passes. And Pete Scott started a bit too soon, the tight end, number 88. So the Seahawks will draw the first penalty of the afternoon. Referee Fred Silva marking it off. Eighty-eight offense, ball start. It is first down, fifteen for the Seahawks, and Pete's has gone out of the ball game, and Mark Bell has come in as we look at the officials: Fred Silva, Ralph uh, Moorcroft, Norm Cragsit, Jack Johnson, Jim Carney, Charlie Musser, Don Orr. McCullum split to the right, Largent to the left. And Seattle will run it out of the eye for the first time today. On first and 15. Sherman Smith doesn't go any place. In fact, he has not down to 45 by number 52, Dick Ambrose. And Jack Patera, the head coach of the Seattle uh, Seahawks, who's used to playing indoors in the Kingdome, is all bundled up for the afternoon. But Jack uh, has complete confidence in his team that it will rebound from last week's game against the Los Angeles Rams. After a loss of two, second down, 17. Zorn, by the way, is hit on nine touchdown passes, has been picked off 12 times, is thrown for 1,882 yards going into this week. Zorn throwing the run, and it is caught at about the 39-yard line by Sam McCullum. And he is brought down by 22, Clarence Scott, the strong safety. Zorn is not your classic drop-back passer, but he scrambles and rolls with the best of them. Here he's rolling out to the right, going to throw left-handed. And you'll see that those defensive backs are going to have to stay with their receivers quite a while as McCollum works open, catches the ball, and takes it in for a game. Sam McCollum, there are his stats for the year, having a good year for the Seahawks, getting a lot of con a lot of concentration by Zorn in those patterns with large in his double cover. Jim Zorn has gone from second and 17 to third down nine, and he has kept this ball five minutes. At the Cleveland 40. Blitz. Zorn picked it. He has got McCollum on the go, and he's inside the 20 at the 18, and Clarence Scott, number 22, the strong safety, had to bring him down with help from 28, Ron Bolton, a gain of 22 yards. When you blitz your linebackers and single coverage by the defensive backs, a slant in pattern is hard to defend against. Here you'll see a little three second drop. Zorn hitting McCollum as he takes it upfield, breaking the seam between two safeties, in for a good gain down to the 19 yard line of Cleveland. Caught in a blitz that time. So the Seahawks are not the Seahawks of a week ago against the Los Angeles Rams. Largent comes in motion. Sherman Smith, the tank. And this Ohio product bounces inside the 15, down to around the 12-yard line. Sherman Smith was a quarterback at Miami of Ohio. Number 77, Lyle Alzado made the tackle after Smith picks up 10 yards. Smith also is a gifted receiver. And you know, George, I've often wondered why Seattle doesn't use him to throw the ball. It's very possible, Merle. They could have a pass, halfback pass in their plan. He, who had a great career as a quarterback at Miami of Ohio, he could do it any time if they want him to. Maybe Patera's been holding it for a key moment, maybe in this game. It is Dornick this time, and he is near the 10, 
Dan Dornick stacked up at about the 10 yard line. Got a couple on the play. Dornick in his second year in the NFL out of Washington State. Sam Reticliano in his second year as head coach of the Browns. He's a raw, raw coach. He's got this team all fired up and they've played so many close ball games. They've had miracle finishes. Uh, for instance, last week, scoring two touchdowns the last four minutes of the ball game to beat Philadelphia. He's been a great leader for this team. Third down one. Flags. And the play will not go. The whistle was blown before it got underway as Zornick, or rather as uh, Dornick carried. And you see the indication of Fred Silva that the Cleveland Browns were offside. And that will give Seattle a first down. Even, go. even in that offside situation, a costly penalty inside the 20 for the Browns. Defense number 78, encroachment. Mickey Sims, the third year tackle out of South Carolina State. Guilty of encroachment, number 78. But if, even with that penalty, you see it inside the 20, featuring the fullback out of what the coaches call a brown set with a with a fullback directly behind the quarterback and a halfback to one side or the other. They'll run Dornick not all the time, but a majority of time from that formation. The Browns have brought in four linebackers now. Darden has gone out. Jackson is in, number 56. First and goal. Sherman Smith, touchdown. Sherman Smith running behind Bevout and Lynch blasts in, and Seattle is on the scoreboard first this afternoon. Sherman Smith scoring easily on that play. Look at the left side of the line here. A little trap on Dimmler. As Smith takes it up inside, Mickey Sims can't get to him. Dimmler is blocked, takes it in with hardly even touch going into the end zone. Great blocking at the point of attack. Already Seattle has held the ball longer than at any time in last week's game and scored more points. Efren Herrera for the extra point try. Zorn puts it down and Herrera does the rest. And so the Seattle Seahawks have controlled the ball to the point that we have seven minutes and 39 seconds left to go in the first quarter. And Seattle is leading by a score of 7 to nothing. Stay with us. Let's obscure the Seahawks was down on the coverage. And Brian Seif will welcome Mike Pruitt is having an outstanding year at fullback along with the veteran Calvin Hill. You can't say enough about Calvin Hill. He's awesome when, it, when you talk about the responsibility he's taken for the ball club. Cleveland's receivers, Rucker, Logan Newsom, 96 catches. All of them in double figures. You'll see a lot of action from all of them today. And so it is Mike Pruitt and Calvin Hill in the backfield. Rucker in motion. Bumble. Sight just about the line of scrimmage. Terry Beeson, 58, the middle linebacker. The third-year man from Kansas is having an outstanding year for the Seahawks. Right on top of Brian Sipe, and those fingers might be a little bit cold. Here's the offensive unit up front in front of Brian Sipe. Cody Rison will have to have a good day today. He's not been playing extremely well, especially against the pass. He'll be facing a number one choice in Seattle, Manu Tuiasasopo. We'll see how Cody can do today. He did well on that one, Manu. <laughs> <laughs> Tuiasasopo. Calvin Hill on the pitch. Calvin Hill on the game. And he is out of bounds on the near sideline at the 34. Mike Pruitt leading the blocking for him. Keith Butler, 53. Knocked him out of bounds after a four-yard gain. Okay. The defensive line now for Seattle. Dennis Boyd getting a starting role today. Well, Dennis Boyd is coming off an injury earlier in the year, and Coach Patera feels at this time he's playing a little better than Carl Eller. Carl will see a little less action, spot playing in passing situations. Dennis getting the majority of the work versus the run. It is 7-0 Seattle as the Seahawks score to the first possession. Marching right down the field, full of confidence and... Zorn let him in with Sherman Smith scoring the touchdown. Third down, seven. Seip, who is thrown for 20, incomplete on the 38. Pretty good hit there on Pruitt by Keith Butler, the linebacker, number 53. Mike Pruitt coming out of the backfield. Both these quarterbacks like to throw to their running backs. And so Cleveland has not been able to pick up the first down, and the Browns will have to punt it away. And Johnny Evans will be coming on to do the kicking. Johnny Evans, the fifth leading punter in the AFC with a, an average of 41.8. His longest this year, 59. He has not been blocked once. And he gets her out of there to Tony Green, number 34 of Seattle, who fields it on the 30. At the 40, fumbles a football. The Browns may have it. 
it. A 36-yard kick and a 10-yard return. And, of course, the Browns fans are anticipating the football belongs to their heroes here. Let's see. Fred Silva will make that decision. Nope. Seattle's ball. Well, they took a point. If they took a vote right at the point where the ball was recovered, Cleveland would win hands down. But the officials called it correctly. Seattle had the ball in possession. Joe Norman, I believe, is a man who fell on the football for Seattle. So Jim Zorn, who led his team 66 yards to a touchdown in the first possession this afternoon, is now ready to go again on the offense. Zorn had a big game last year against the Browns, uh, over 200 yards in the air. Al Hunter is now in the backfield for Seattle, number 24, the former Notre Dame All-American, along with Sherman Smith, 47. Zorn wants to go upstairs. Screen is set. There's Hunter. Midfield, 45, down to the 42. Fumbles it. The Browns have a shot at it this time. Let's see who has a possession. The Browns. The Browns recover the football. Ron Bolden, number 28. There he is. Big play for Bolden. Al Hunter coming in spot playing. Zorn dumps the screen off to him. You'll see it form around him. As he takes it upfield, he gets adequate blocking. But he's hit right here. You'll see Charlie Hall, number 59, sort of strip the ball out of his hands. A big recovery by Cleveland. Now the offense will have to get going. But again, a big fumble play by Seattle as Al Hunter Gets scraped by 59, Charlie Hall. And so we have a timeout as the Browns take over again, but Seattle leads 7 0. In this series, let's see if Brian Seif goes to work on this Seattle secondary. Dave Brown, one of the original Seahawks, number 22, Autry Bremen, moved to free safety. Keith Simpson, a starting role, and Cornell Webster, a lot of pressure on these folks with 20 TD passes already by Brian Seif. In motion, Reggie Rucker, number 33. Calvin Hill, second ever, gets him more than five, about six. And the tackler is Michael Jackson, number 55. The rookie from the University of Washington, number one draft choice this spring by the Seattle Seahawks. There he is, Michael Jackson, 6'1", 220 pounds, has replaced Sammy Green, starting as a left linebacker this week. They mark it as a five-yard gain. It'll be second down and five for Brian Seif and company. Brian has completed 54.7% of his passes, 20 touchdowns, 19 interceptions. And Brian calls timeout. Something is wrong. Brian Seif, the veteran quarterback, six years out of San Diego State, didn't like what he saw, and he's coming to the sideline to talk to Sam Ritigliano. Seattle drove 66 yards for a touchdown. Now the Browns will try to put it together as Seattle leads 7 to nothing. NBC brings two spectacular suspense movies to TV for the first time. Tonight, Al Pacino stars in an unforgettable role, Dog Day Afternoon. Tomorrow night, Gregory Peck and Lee Remick star in the thriller, The Omen. Dog Day Afternoon tonight, The Omen tomorrow night. Two thrilling television events, both on NBC. Rucker goes in motion to the right on a second down and five. Mike Pruitt, and Pruitt losing his footing and running in to Keith Butler, 53. Terry Beeson, 58, goes nowhere. That's Butler, the right linebacker. So, a loss on the play of two, making it third down, eight. Mike Pruitt goes out. Cleo Miller, number 30, comes into the backfield now for the Cleveland Browns. Miller, a six-year veteran from Arkansas, Pine Bluff. Brian Seif, who leads the NFL in touchdown, passes with 20. Cleo Miller, who just came into the game, number 30, was the intended receiver. And the Browns are sluggish, George, in their first two series. They are. They definitely are sluggish, and hopefully they'll get out of the doldrums in time to get back in the game. And look what we have here. Houston Oakland, 7-7 in the first quarter. Earl Campbell has scored his 13th touchdown of the year. Kenny Stabler is thrown to Chester. And Pittsburgh, 7-0 over Kansas City on a Bradshaw pass to Stallworth. Detroit leading Tampa Bay. Robinson on a six-yard run for Detroit. Back to 
to the punting. Johnny Evans drills it downfield to Tony Green at the 18. Green looking for the blocking flag is down. And at the 22, the big pile up there. A kick of 39 yards and a return of four. And everybody's wondering who's got the football. But there was a flag, and let's see what that's all about. Ooh, Withers just got uh, Fred Silva under the chin as he got up there. Willis Adams and Peter Cronin were battling for the ball. The penalty against the Seahawks is going to really put him in a hole. Personal foul, clipping. Number 41 on the run back. First down. So the clipping call is against Seattle. And Fred Silva said 41, but they don't have a 41. So anyway, Seattle clip. We have a timeout with 4.50 to go in the first quarter. And the Seahawks lead it 7-0. Saturday on Sports World, the action is fast and furious as the Muhammad Ali Boxing Club with Tony Tubbs and Davey Armstrong scheduled to compete square off against the Mexico Boxing Club. Plus, see the bizarre and bruising sport of barrel jumping and semifinal action of the Legends of Bowling all Saturday on Sports World. Hunter is now in the backfield. Number 24 for Seattle as Largen goes in motion. Play action. And there's Largen out there. Steve Largen. He is out of bounds at about the 30. And Clarence Scott, 22, had the coverage again of 21 yards. Sam McCollum had run the deep pattern. But this is the passing combination that has really made things exciting for the Seahawks fans over the last few years. And every time Largent gets one-on-one -on -one coverage, they look for him. That time, Clarence Scott had the call. Largent turned around, made a great catch. Good coverage by Scott, but a finer catch by Largent. So Jim Zorn, with his Seahawks ahead 7-0, runs it out of the aisle. Smith and the former quarterback across the 30 for one, Sherman Smith, brought down by 92, Rich Dimmler. Miami is leading Baltimore 7-0. As the Colts have won four out of the last five, but they're playing without Burt Jones. And Washington leads St. Louis by a score of 7 to nothing in the first quarter on a John Riggins touchdown run. San Diego, Cincinnati, well, the Bengals are ahead 7 to nothing as Pete Johnson has scored from one yard out. Dan Fouts will have to have a big day. They're completing a four-game road trip, by the way, San Diego. Sherman Smith again, big hole up the middle. And Smith is yanked down by Rich Dimmler, 92, but he advances a ball across the 35 to the 37 for a seven-yard pickup. That play there is a big, big instrument in the Seattle Arsenal. The sprint draw, variations of it, giving the ball to Smith, taking it upfield. Zorn rolls so much, they feel a little counter move by Smith will help him get into the middle for good yardage, especially against number 92, Rich Dimmler. So the Seahawks have a third down, about three and a half. No setbacks. And the Seahawks got a little over anxious. Nick Bebout, number 63, made the move. A seven-year veteran from Wyoming. Sixty-three. Ball start. It's not so much the, the movement that's embarrassing. It's the fact when you fire out, you still miss the man. Jack Gregory, number 81. Nick Bebout firing out a little early, but Gregory still sidestepping him. I'm sure Nick is a little embarrassed, not only by the penalty, but the miss. Seattle's third penalty. They have 20 yards minus now as a result of penalties. Third down, eight. Largent in motion. They're sending four receivers. That's McCollum. And McCollum is out of bounds somewhere up around the 47-yard line. Sam McCollum, number 84, the six-year veteran from Montana. 
who has done a good job. He picked up 13 yards on the play. Well, we can't see it on the replay, but they released the line of scrimmage at the same moment that Largent and McCollum were together. One Largent went straight. McCollum broke over the middle. You see a little confusion in the de defensive secondary. McCollum got the ball, is chased out of bounds. But good timing on that part brought about the completion of that pass play. Timing before the ball was snapped. The Seahawks have a first down. Zorn is 7 out of 7, 92 yards. A far cry from last week when he was a minus 30. Largent in motion. Could have been picked up. Al Hunter was the intended receiver. McCollum was also in the pattern, number 84 and number 24. So Jim Zorn has his first incompletion of the afternoon. Talking about uh, Jim Zorn, you know, you look at last week, it was like unbelievable. In fact, one of the Seattle papers simply ran a headline, minus seven. That pretty well told the story, and people that had not seen the game out there last week got up and saw shock. But uh, it appears that Seattle has come back, and they're playing with a lot of poise. Sherman Smith to the 47 of the Browns. Tom Darden, number 27, on the tackle, along with 57, Clay Matthews, after a gain of five. Sherman Smith, also a very gifted receiver, has caught 30 passes for 298 yards, and we're down to two minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first quarter here in uh, Cleveland. As Sherman Smith goes out of the football game, Al Hunter, or Jeff Moore, rather, number 32, is in to replace him. A slot and two wide receivers. Zorn. Completes it at the 35 to Sam McCullum. And McCullum has the first down of the Cleveland 32 as Clarence Scott, number 22, made the tackle. But we have a flag drop back in the Seattle backfield. And that usually tells you that it's going to be a holding penalty. That a holding penalty against Seattle, which saves Cleveland. But the boos you heard before the play and after the completion were boos from the Cleveland fan concerning the nickel defense, which the Browns have been running. Offense holding number 78. Holding by Bob Newton, number 78, the right guard of the Seahawks. Bob, a nine-year veteran from Nebraska. Jack Patera and the Seahawks have a 7-0 lead on this chilly day in Cleveland. But the Browns fans, well, they've got the championship fever back again. Third down, 14. Largent, the intended receiver, and it was Tom Darden who had the coverage and almost picked it off. So now the Seahawks have to give up the football. It'll be fourth down coming up. Almost 14 yards to go. We're down to two minutes and 24 seconds to play in the first quarter. And going back to do the punting for Seattle will be Herman Weaver. And Dino Hall, who is 5'7", from Glassboro State, back for the reception. Weaver with a 40.8 average. Drills it very well. Dino Hall, an exciting little ball player at the 7, the 10, the 15. Where is he? There he is at the 20, and down he goes. Dino Hall had trouble getting in the locker room in Philadelphia last week. He didn't have credentials. They didn't think he was a football player. Dino Hall trying to get in a football locker room is like George Coons trying to get in a jockey's room at Santa Anita. 49-yard kick, a 12-yard return. Next Sunday, start your day with NFL 79 when they examine the knee injury. Then see the Jets versus the Bears or the Dolphins battle the Browns, followed by a great matchup as Dan Fouts and the San Diego Air Attack try to pierce Pittsburgh's steel curtain. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. And here they are. First down on the 20 for the Browns. 2-12 to go in the first quarter. The Browns trail by seven. Sight for the little play action. Swings it to Hill. Breaking the tackle. Calvin out across the 25 to the 26. And Terry Beeson, 58, the middle linebacker, is over there to whack him down with help from Robert Hardy, number 75. A gain of six. 
This is something that Calvin Hill has done well for 10 years in the NFL. Brian Seip, a little play action fake inside. You see Calvin, number 35, going out in the right flat, evading the attacking linebacker, number 55, Michael Jackson, taking it upfield for a good game. Calvin Hill is a catalyst on this club. He talks to players. He helps players along. He's a definite favorite with the fans. He's contributed a lot. He's a, he's a man who's made his mark in his ball club, as he has several others, one that has had a great career in the NFL. Speaking of fan favorite, Dino Hall, the little guy, is now in the backfield as a tailback. There he is. Fighting for the first down. He's at the 30. Terry Beeson, 58, knocked him out of bounds. He got four yards, and he may have the first down. As Robert E. Jackson, number 68, the right guard pulled to lead the blocking for Dino Hall who had a big run last week against Philadelphia. A 24-yard run that set up a touchdown late in the ball game. And Dino is coming out now. He's done his job, and he is replaced by Pat Moriarty, number 25. First down for the Browns at the Brown 30. 48 seconds to go in the first quarter. Seattle leading 7 to nothing. Slot left for the Browns. Rucker in motion. Sight has Newsom at the 47. Big Ozzie Newsom, the tight end, a former wide receiver, a super football player, and a first down for the Browns brought down by Keith Simpson, number 42. A fine end zone shot, so is Brian Sype looking off to his right at Rucker and then looking back in over the middle as he sees Ozzie Newsom working his way into the seam. There it is. One of the things Newsom does that has helped him become a great tight end is catch the football deep. Here, penetrating against the linebackers, coming up with a catch, getting a first down for Cleveland. And that 18-yard gain brings the first quarter to an end here in Cleveland as the Browns start to put it together. Let's see what they can do in the second quarter. Seattle scored on its first possession. At the end of the first quarter, the score Seattle 7, Cleveland nothing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Merle Herbert and George Coons with you in Cleveland, Ohio, where the Seattle Seahawks, who are going for their fifth one of the year, are leading the Cleveland Browns by a score of 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Sam Ritigliano has complete confidence that his team can come back. They've done it so many times this year. Of course, the Seahawks have done the same thing. Second quarter, Dino Hall is back in the backfield, a tail back in the eye. Play action by Seif. Going for it all. And it is intercepted by Upgrade Beeman. Beeman brings it back across the 30 to the 40. He is near midfield and he is out of bounds in Browns territory. And Dino Hall had to make the tackle. Upgrade Beeman, the five year veteran from East Texas State, brought it back 40 yards. And Seattle comes up with great field position. You see Sype dropping back to pass, getting a good run downfield by Logan. You'll see Autry Beeman playing a very deep center field as he steps in front of Logan. The pass not greatly thrown. Beeman stepping in there, picking up the ball, returning it for good yardage. A big play to start this quarter for Seattle as he takes it upfield into Cleveland Brown territory at their own 48-yard line. Sherman Smith and Dan Dornick are the split backs for Seattle. Make that Al Hunter. Al Hunter is in there in place of Dornick. Play action by Zorn. He wants it all. He's got Largent out there, and he is down the one-yard line. Steve Largent got behind Oliver Davis, number 21, and he was wide open. Single coverage. You'll see Zorn stepping back. Largent running downfield with Davis. Clearly a mismatch because he's only about three yards in front of him as he turns around the ball a little bit under thrown, but a great catch by Largent. Davis catches him at the one-yard line. Seattle's ball. They are going to put that ball down. Let's see. I believe officially now at the two, which would make it a 49-yard pass play. Tony Benjamin has come on the field for Seattle as we have a timeout call. And Fred Silva. Is that Fred Silva? Nope. One of the other officials has a problem. Fred Silva, the referee in the black cap. We don't uh, we don't have the number yet, but there are alternate officials standing by. The ball will be placed on the two yard line as Browns fans are here from everywhere.
everywhere, including area Pennsylvania. It's got to be a bruising game where they help the official off the field. Oh, boy. Zorn has now hit 8 out of 10 for 142 yards. And the Brown defensive unit will be severely tested. The goal line stand will be on. Smith, touchdown. So Sherman Smith scores his second touchdown of the afternoon. And Seattle goes on top by 13 to nothing. Sherman Smith, who bought 52 tickets for this game, so his hometown folks could see him. You see him going right. Good blocking at the point of the attack. Newton, number 78, walling off the defenders. As Smith just barely gets it into the end zone, but it's enough for six points. So Efren Herrera is in for the extra point try. With just a couple of minutes inside the second quarter here in Cleveland. Zorn puts it down, and Herrera hits the upright. It is not good. And so the PAT, no good. Herrera doesn't miss many, but he missed that one. So we have a timeout with 13.57 to go, and Seattle has a 13-point lead. Herrera will be kicking off for Seattle, and the Seahawks are out in front by a score of 13 to nothing. Dino Hall will be back deep for the Cleveland Browns. And a bit of a surprise here today. The Browns will have to really put it together in this possession. Dino Hall at the 10. The 20, 25, 30, 35, 37. Near the 38 and down he goes. Little Dino Hall out of Glassboro State. Brought that ball back 28 yards and Sammy Green had to make the tackle over 56. Little guy with a lot of courage. You know, guys of Dino's stature and weight don't necessarily stay in the league that long, but you can see the desire at five foot seven, 165 pounds. He's five foot six and 150 pounds of heart. The rest of it is a little bone and other marrow, but he's quite a player for his size. Brian Sight going upstairs on the first down. And it's incomplete on the 40 underthrown. It was intended for Ozzie Newsom and Keith Simpson, number 42, had the coverage. The injured official is the field judge, Charlie Musser, who has a pull muscle in his left calf. He's on the sideline with the Cleveland Browns, being attended now by Dr. John Bergfield, the Browns team physician. First and 10 for the Browns and the Brown 38-yard line. The Browns open the season with four straight wins over the Jets, Kansas City, Baltimore, and Dallas. Then they drop three in a row, but have come back to win three in a row. Sipe in the pocket, back over the middle, and it's incomplete on the 45, intended for Dave Logan, number 85, Tom Darden, or rather, Autry Beeman, rather, is back there on the coverage. Looking at the other ball games, the Buffalo Bills with Joe Ferguson. The leading passer in the NFL, ahead of the New York Jets, 7 0. And St. Louis and Washington are deadlocked at 7 in that Eastern Conference battle in the NFC. San Diego and Cincinnati, how about this one? Cincinnati ahead of Down Fountain Company, 14 0. San Diego's been playing on the road for four weeks, and Houston now 14 7 over the Oakland Raiders in the second quarter. Cleo Miller is in, Mike Pruitt is out of the backfield of the Browns on third down, 10. Newsom got one hand on it, but he couldn't pull it down. Number 42, Keith Simpson, the strong safety, had the coverage on the big tight end. Pittsburgh ahead of Kansas City, 17 to nothing, as the Steelers march on. If they win this one, they'll be 9-2. And, and, of course, Cleveland and Houston tied for second, trying to hang in there with 7-3 and three records going into the action today. Detroit, surprising lead over Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay leads the Central Division in the NFC. Back to do the kicking, Johnny Evans, number eight, Tony Green, 34, will try to bring it back as Seattle goes for the block. No flag down as the punter goes down, and the ball rolls inside the 25, and that's where the Seahawks will put it in play. A 37-yard kick and no return. So watch Johnny Evans, who studied theater in college. 
apparently. Watch the a drama as you get the rush there. But he'll take a tumble, as all good punters do, do trying to provoke a penalty. Johnny Evans has not had a great year punting this year. We'll talk more about that when we come back after this word. Cleveland's Municipal Stadium has a capacity of a little bit of an 80,000. Would you believe it was built at a cost of about $3 million? But a young man named Dart Modell came from New York as we look at score the score of this ball game here in the second quarter. Came from New York, former television producer, became owner of the Cleveland Browns and a great civic leader now. And the renovations that Art Modell has led here as the prime tenant of this big stadium have totaled three times more the construction cost. There's the pass for the left-handed throwing Sherman Smith, the former quarterback, and it's completed to Brian Peets, the tight end, and he is brought down by Oliver Davis, number 21. So Brian Peets comes up with a reception. Sherman Smith a little rusty, throwing like a tank, not only running like one, but the left-hander tosses it out there to Peets, who makes a good grab. We spoke a little earlier about the possibility of that halfback pass, and Coach Patera has been opening up his offense. You'll probably see a few more innovations besides that passing of Smith. All right, a gain of nine, a gain of ten. First down. First down and ten to go. Jim Zorn. Al Hunter for a couple. Former Notre Dame star. Out to about the 37. Number 78, Mickey Sims is there. He got a yard in the play. Lyle Alzado, 77, the defensive left end also in there. Coach Sam Tigliano is now going to Henry Bradley, number 91, in place of Rich Dimmler at the right tackle spot. Bradley, a one-year veteran from Alcorn State. Second and nine for Seattle. The Seahawks lead 13 to nothing in the second quarter. McCollum motion. McCollum slipped. He was the intended receiver at the 50-yard line. The coverage by Clarence Scott, 22. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Cleveland Browns of the National Football League is prohibited. We're talking about Art Modell a little while ago, the big stadium here has really gone through quite a renovation, but Art Modell's civic pride and his efforts here even go beyond the stadium. He's very active in the downtown redevelopment program. So he's not only put a great product on the field, but works in other civic endeavors here. Third down, nine. Once again, the nickel defense for Cleveland. Incomplete, thrown behind the intended receiver, Sam McCullough. And so Zorn, who had eight out of eight to start the ball game, was not on target on that one. Fourth down coming up. Somebody called it a Swiss cheese defense. Uh, At times you can believe it. It looks like a Swiss cheese defense, but they always seem to pull it out, which is a mark of a good ball club. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for the punt. And Herman Weaver pops it away. Fair catch called for and taken by Dino Hall on the 24. A kick of 39 yards and no return. And the Browns will take another crack at it. With 11.41 to go in the first half, Seattle leads it 13 to nothing. Saturday on Sports World, the action is fast and furious as the Muhammad Ali Boxing Club squares off against the Mexico Boxing Club on Sports World Saturday on NBC. Well, Brian Seip and his offensive unit with plenty of backing in the stands are going to see if they can't get a drive going now at the Brown 24. Rucker comes in motion. Mike Pruitt on the slant, giving it the second and third try. Might have popped up the football. And Seattle is recovered. Costly fumble for the Browns in that situation. Pruitt trying to get the second effort going. Lost the ball on his own 30-yard line. Super field position. A chance to get more, more points for Seattle. Autry Beeman, number 27, recovered the football. So Beeman has come up with a couple of big plays now. At the 31, Seattle's offensive unit is right back on the field. So the Browns have not been able to put it together. Al Hunter and Sherman Smith are the running back. Dan Dornick out with a slight injury, maybe back. Jones 
going to try to hit him in a hurry. There's large and incomplete. The coverage by Oliver Davis, number 21, the right cornerback. And Largent was open. The pass was not there. That was a pattern they may come back to. The Zorn's got to wonder what would happen if his pass was a little bit lower. Now a play brought in by 82. Mark Bell, a tight end. The Browns have won 7 of 10. We mentioned they opened the season with a four-game winning streak, then they lost to Houston, Pittsburgh, and Washington, bounced back to beat Cincinnati, St. Louis, and Philadelphia. Sam Ritigliano says from here on in, they control their own destiny as far as a playoff spot is concerned. Large in motion. And the pitch coming back to Sherman Smith. He's down to the 25. And Lyle Alzado, 77, makes the tackle. It'll be third down, five. Oliver Davis, 21, came up. Efren Herrera starts warming up for a possible field goal attempt. We'll probably see a spread out Seattle offense on this play with a split backs, one behind each offensive tackle. Zorn looking to go to the air probably on this particular play. All right, and the Browns defense adjusts accordingly. They've got an extra defensive back in. Completed to Sherman Smith coming out of the backfield. He's got the first down inside the 20. Chased out of bounds by 57. Clay Matthews, the right linebacker. A gain of six and up for the first down. Clay Matthews, the second-year man from USC, number 57. He had two big plays last week, I think, for early. He had a fumble recovery and then tipped the ball, which Charlie Hall grabbed to win the ball game versus Philadelphia. Clay Matthews, number one choice out of USC, a man they're very high on. Their blitz here, their quickest linebacker, probably, and a man they can build on in the future. Here come the Seahawks, leading by 13 to nothing. 10 minutes, 43 seconds to go in the first half. Zorn going for Largent. Not good at the five. Coverage by 22, Clarence Scott. And number 21, Oliver Davis over there to help out. You know, I don't know what's going on with these quarterbacks, but Zorn and Seip also have been high on their passes. The cold weather could be getting to him as you see him on occasion trying to keep his hands warm. Not in this case, but he will in the future, I guarantee it. Miami leading Baltimore 7-0. The Colts playing without Burt Jones. Buffalo ahead of the New York Jets now by a score of 7-6 to six in the second quarter. Kevin Long has scored for the Jets. Cincinnati over San Diego, 14-3. Mike Wood has a 22-yard field goal for the Bengals. Zorn down inside the 15 to up the 13. And Tom Darden, 27, was all over him. He got Jim's, six yards, though. Jim Zorn, one of the plays in our arsenal, is a premeditated quarterback draw. You see him take about three steps back as number 78. Mickey Sims try to get a hold of him, but he sh uh, shucks off Sims, keeps going downfield. It's a pre-designed play, something Zorn does when he feels that the defense is covering in the flats or the defensive linemen are taking a wide rush when he feels he can get up inside off the block of number 51, Yarno, is center. And you just saw that Zorn has rushed for over 200 yards this year. Third down, four. Humble from Smith falls on it. Dimler was on him. Sometimes when you reach too far trying to put the ball in, this will happen. You see Art Al Hunter going in there, number 24. Sherman Smith trying to come around to get the ball, but as he slips, the ball gets out of his grasp. It's a good thing for Seattle that he recovered in that position. Chance to get three points. On fourth down and seven, Efren Herrera will go for the field goal right up the middle from the 24, making a 34-yard effort. From this range, he's five out of seven this year. And overall, 12 out of 16. The distance is good, and the football is right through the uprights. And Seattle puts three more on the scoreboard. We have nine minutes and seven seconds to go in the first half. Here in Cleveland this afternoon, and the Seattle Seahawks have jumped to a 16 to nothing lead. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KING-TV, Seattle. Merle Herman and George Coons with you in Cleveland, where the Seattle Seahawks bouncing back 
after being shut out and even humiliated by the Los Angeles Rams last week, are leading the Cleveland Browns 16 to nothing. Efren Herrera is kicking off. And back deep is Dino Hall, the little guy from Glassboro State, just outside Philadelphia. Dino at the goal line will bring it back at the 10. And is chopped down just about at the 20-yard line. Tackler, Clay Matthews, 57, or Peter Cronin, beg your pardon. Welcome. Thank you. We appreciate that very much. Isn't it just... <laughs> Isn't it just like a producer and director to have their names up on top? Oh, yes. Well, Seattle, the last scoring drive, they had the ball for seven plays, 15 yards, capped for the field goal at 34 by Herrera. And the Browns move it this time from the 20. Threw it for about seven. Dropped down by Terry Beeson, 58, the middle linebacker. Make it eight yards. It'll be second down two for Mike Pruitt, who's having an outstanding year for the Cleveland Browns. Pruitt has gained 600, uh, had gained 690 yards going into this one today. He's second in the AFC to Earl Campbell in rushing. Campbell has 932 yards. Pruitt has averaged 4.5 yards a carry. Slot left for the Browns. Second and two. Through it again. Just short of the 30. 53, Keith Butler is over there. Terry Beeson, 58, the middle linebacker, also there. You know, the Seattle defense is playing good ball against a fine offensive team. They ought to be congratulated. They're doing the job of making, making Cleveland pay in time and distance for the amount of yardage they get. So those 11 men on the field right there are doing exactly what Coach Patera wants them to do. That is, make Cleveland use the clock Make them pay with time and distance. Make them pay to score. Seven minutes, 45 seconds to go in the first half. Third down, very short. And Mike Pruitt, I believe, has the first down at the 30. Pruitt had to stay right with it. He got popped right at the line of scrimmage. He had to go to the 30. Manu Tuiasisopo, number 74, was in there. And Brian Seip looks to the sideline. They set the ball up. And Fred Silva wants the chains. Talking about Sam Ritigliano's observation of the rest of the season for the Browns, any part of the ball will do it. And the crowd tells you first down Cleveland Browns, and the Browns haven't had many of those. The Browns have not been able to put together any kind of a sustained drive here in the first half. And we're down to seven and a half minutes to go in the first half with Seattle leading by a score of 16 to nothing. But the Browns, they take the attitude and, and, a, and a winning ball club takes that attitude. Hey, we got to win this thing ourselves. We can't depend on anybody else to do it for us. But you can't always win it in the second half, which is a good ending to that comment. They've got to get something going in both halves to be effective. And sight misses Reggie Rucker. So Seip is off target today. Webster, 38, had the coverage on the play. Again, that's a fifth or sixth time that Seip has overthrown an open receiver. We'll see if he can bring the ball down. Something seems to be wrong with both quarterbacks in that respect, but perhaps they can get that ball a little bit lower. The Browns need a big play to really get him going. Seven minutes, 14 seconds to go in the first half, and so far it has been all Seattle. And you really have to admire the Seahawks, the way they've come back from that loss of a week ago. Obviously, they are not the same team. The blitz. And it's caught by Newsom. Here's the big play. Almost. He's got out of bounds in the midfield stripe. Cornell Webster got him out of bounds as Newsom almost broke it down the sideline. He picked up 19 yards on that one. Having awesome Ozzie Newsom in a ball game, awesome Ozzie Newsom, is like having a third wide receiver. You'll see number 42, Keith Simpson, trying to keep coverage on Newsom, but Newsom making a fine catch out of a great throw by Seip. As he takes it upfield, eluding Simpson, who's doing a fairly good job, bumped out of bounds by number 38, Cornell Webster, coming over to try to help. Big play for Cleveland, keeps the drive going just shy of Seattle territory. 
Now the Browns have the ball at the Brown 49. Seven minutes, six seconds to go in the first half. Mike Pruitt right up the middle. Mike Pruitt bangs down to the 42 of the Seahawks. Autry Beeman from the secondary, who was blitzing on the last play. He was the safety blitzer. Made the tackle after an eight-yard pickup. And now the Browns are starting to put a drive together. You know, it's amazing. Once you get a pass play that clicks, getting you some good yardage, those runs start to open up since the defenders are thinking a little more pass. Let's see what Sight decides to do now. Double tight end. Second down short. Now splitting to the right is Logan. First down for Aaron Moore. Hill at the 31. And Keith Simpson, number 42, and Autry Beeman, 27. The safeties have to make the tackle after a gain of 11 on Calvin Hill. Calvin Hill, a big play. Big play right there. Calvin has come up with a lot of them. Not the greatest speed anymore, but a great amount of desire and determination. And his glow carries over to his teammates. Take a look at the hole again. The offensive line blocking for Hill as he takes it up into the Seattle territory. Brought down by not one, but two Seattle defenders. Five minutes, 50 seconds to go in the first half. This is Mike Pruitt again inside the 30 to about the 28. A gain of three. Bill Cook, 67. Bill Gregory, 77. Make the tackle for the Seattle Seahawks. And just like turning the water faucet on, the Cleveland Browns have started to move it, going from their own 20-yard line down to the 28-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. One play seems to be a catalyst in starting a drive. Ozzie Newsom came up with a big play for Cleveland. Now Cleveland inside the 30-yard line of Seattle. Take a look at Sight. Sight looks for Logan. Going to run the ball. He's at the 20. Runs it out of bounds at the 18. He's got a first down. Brian Seif showing that he, too, like Jim Zorn, can run the football. Chased out of bounds by 53. Keith Butler, the linebacker, but he got 12 on the play. A risky but a wise decision by Seif to run the ball. Everybody was 20 yards deep. Take a look at the linebackers and the safety people blowing out of there as he evades the rush. You'll see all these people back there. Number 58, Beeson, at the five-yard line, trying to come up and make the tackle as 53, Butler, Wisely, Sipes runs out of bounds. Butler escorting him to the sideline. And you may have seen as our replay started, a big block by Tom DeLeon, number 54 of the center. Those guys are unheralded. They do a job. Thank you, Earl. Offensive line. Yes, sir. Sipes at the five, and it is incomplete. Reggie Rucker, pass was thrown low, and Rucker couldn't hang on to it. Cornell Webster had the coverage. Number 38 on this man, Reggie Rucker, a 10-year veteran from Boston University. Reggie Rucker had caught passes for 500 yards going into this one. A 17-yard average, and he has scored five touchdowns this year for the Browns. One thing about Brian Seif, he's got so many gifted receivers, he really spreads it out. Terry Beeson is out. Don Dufek has come in as now Seattle goes to a nickel defense. Second down, 10. Five minutes, six seconds to go in the first half. Seattle leading 16 to nothing. A lot of time for Sight. How much time? Lots of time. Again, he's got an area to run to. And he takes it down to about the 12. It is brought down by Robert Hardy, number 75. The tackle, the rookie from Jackson State. You can't give a quarterback that kind of time. And what's remarkable is that Sipe was blitzed and had that much time. Linebackers shot up in there. You see him coming as the backs stay in to protect Sipe all the time in the world. He can read a novel back there if he so desired. As he rolls around right, you see since the linebackers are caught inside, the safety people have to come up. Evade Simpson, 42, finally brought down by the defensive lineman Hardy. Good hustle on his part. But Brian Sipe, three rushes for 17 yards. Ball on the 12s. Cleveland timeout. And so we have a timeout here with a ball at the 11-yard line, and Brian Seip comes to the sideline. This is Cleveland's Municipal Stadium. Merle Harbin and George Coons with you, and we have a shocking Seattle 60 0 lead over the Cleveland Browns. The Browns had not been able to do anything in this first half, and we have four minutes and 24 seconds to go until just a couple of minutes ago. When the Browns started to drive from their own 20, they have moved the ball down to the 11-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. 
Meanwhile, Seattle has controlled the game here in the first half. First of all, Smith scored on a smash from the five as Seattle drove 66 yards on its first possession. Sherman Smith going over for the touchdown. And Seattle led 7 0 at the end of the first period. Then Sherman Smith came back on a two yard run after a 50 yard Zorn to Largent pass that put the ball in the two. And Seattle went on top 13 to nothing. Then came Herrera's 34 yard field goal after Seattle recovered a fumble. And Seattle moved in front 16 to nothing. And the Browns, who were 7 and 3 in the Central Division, tied with Houston and hoping for a championship. But if not, if the Steelers go on to win it, they hope for a playoff berth through the wild card. And Brian Seif, who has thrown for 20 touchdowns this year to lead all NFL quarterbacks, will now try to take the Browns home on a third down three. The ball at the 11. And 70,000 Browns fans are up, hoping that Seif and Coveney can get the job done. Here we go. Third and three. Sight with time, it to the end zone, incomplete. Calvin Hill coming out of the backfield as the intended receiver. A little bit too high. Once again, the fifth or sixth time Sipes has been high with his passes. The receiver's having a little trouble getting underneath. And now it looks as if Seattle will be going for a field goal. So now a field goal attempt coming for the Browns. So with a fourth down coming up, fourth down and three, Don Cockroft comes on for the field goal attempt, but will gambling Sam Ritigliano go for the fake? Dave Logan will hold at the 19-yard line. The Browns play it straight, and Cockroft pops it right through there, and the Browns get on the scoreboard for the first time this afternoon with four minutes and 14 seconds left to play in the first half. The Browns march 80 yards and settle for three. So we're down to four minutes and 14 seconds to play. And Seattle is still leading it big. The Browns, of course, hope that they can stop Seattle on its next offensive thrust and get one more shot at scoring before we reach halftime. Well, they'll definitely try to get another shot at scoring. What will be interesting to see is how is Coach Ritigliano going to try, going to treat this kickoff. He's been gambling all year long. Let's see if he gambles here. Thanksgiving is a special day, and NBC is a special game. When Earl Campbell, Dan Pastorini, and the Houston Oilers come to call on Roger Staubach, Tony Dorsett, and the Dallas Cowboys. Turkey and Texas football. What an attraction. All November 22nd, right here on NBC. Turkey and Texas football. Oh, there's nothing like it. What a rivalry. And the turkey's not bad either. <laughs> Those Texas turkeys are big, George. <laughs> Cockrop will kick it off. You don't suppose Cleveland would do anything like going on sides here, do you? Well, with Coach Ritigliano, you never know, Merrill. I would tend to believe that he would probably play it safe and hope that his defense can get the ball back. But you just never know. Coach Ritigliano's done that all year long. He's taken chances. He, he's believed in his people. He believes staunchly in his defense, even though they're not rated too highly. Let's see what he decides here now. Cockcroft ready to kick it away. Tony Green and Jeff Moore deep for the Seahawks. Again, they play it straight. It's Green at the 8. Tony to the 20. And it's dropped down at about the 24. Dino Hall downfield on the coverage, and Ricky Jones, 47, was also down there. Well, Cleveland, 69 yards, 13 plays, settled for three, had the ball four minutes and 53 seconds, but Seattle has had it most of the time here in the first half. Don Cockross field goal for the three points. I think Seattle's probably had the ball more in this half than they did the whole game last week. If you can see that one game does not make a season. I remember being on a team, and we were so prolific offensively, we averaged nine points a game in a 14-game season. Seattle is way ahead of that pace, and it looks like they'll be coming back and trying to get some more. Coming up at halftime, NFL 79. We should do a special on that. No, Even thank you. Run. No, thank you. Zorn staying in the air. Sherman Smith coming out of the backfield. Couldn't hold it. Got popped by Charlie Hall. 
the linebacker number 59. You know, the uh, the Rams really put an all-out blitz on uh, Zorn last week. You know, you, you wondered, George, when one team has been so successful, like the Rams were blitzing Zorn continuously last week in the Kingdom, what influence that has on Cleveland's defensive game plan. Well, each defense is predicated on the type of people they have playing. The Rams have a lot of confidence in their defensive secondary. Therefore, they feel like they can blitz their backers and get away with it. I think Cleveland wants to help their defensive backs more in the coverage, and you probably won't see as much blitzing, but a little bit more coming up. And the Cleveland defense responds against Al Hunter, led by 77 Lyle Alzado and Tom Darden, number 27, and Al Hunter could get but three out of it. Lyle Alzado had many great years as an all-pro with the Denver Broncos, nine-year veteran out of Yankton, South Dakota. Third down, seven. We're down to three minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first half. Seattle leading 16 to three. Big third down play for the defense and the offense. Jeff Moore, 32, Al 124 in the backfield. Passing formation for Seattle. Everybody split wide. We're going to air it out. Zorn zips it away and double coverage at the 40 yard line on the intended receiver, Steve Largent. And Tom Darden, 27, and Oliver Davis, 21, running. Double coverage on Largent, and Zorn wants to go to him anyway. You see number 21 running down, trying to get him. Coming back is Largent, number 27, Davis stepping in there, along with number 27, Darden, and number 21, Davis, pardon me, to break up the pass. Zorn trying to force it to his receiver, not being successful in that play. Weaver back to punt to Dino Hall for the Cleveland Browns. Three minutes, 11 seconds to go in the first half. Weaver pops it away. Dino Hall will let it bounce. But he won't let it roll. He picks it up. He little guy comes back, gets it to the 35, returned it about two. So Dino Hall, a 38-yard punt, a two-yard return. And the tackle by Dennis Boyd, number 68 of Seattle. And the Browns take over with 2.59 to go in the first half. And they're trailing 16 to 3. Saturday on Sports World, the action. The action is there. The greatest as the Muhammad Ali Boxing Club squares off against the Mexico Boxing Club. Then Mark Roth and Buzz Fazio lead their teams into the pressure pack semifinals of the Legends of Bowling, plus America's best challenge, Canada's best in the bizarre and bruising sport of barrel jumping. That's all Saturday on Sports World. You ought to see George Coons in barrel jumping. Those barrels really fly. Sam Ritigliano now hoping that his team can put another score on the board before the first half comes to an end. You know, he, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say Sam uh, Ritigliano uh, played his college ball at Tennessee and Tulsa. And football has been his life. And Jack Patera, of course. Jack Patera had a lot of great years in the pros. Of course, has had a great coaching career. He was an assistant coach for several clubs. He's been the only coach that Seattle has had. And last year was named Coach of the Year when the Seahawks won nine. And now all eyes are on Brian Seip. Brian Seip, again, wanting to get the ball club going, hoping that he can maneuver this team again about 65 yards downfield for a score that they need at this time to be competitive before the end of the half. But in the same sense, if they can pick apart Seattle now, they'll know they can come back and do the job in the second half. It's always good to win ball games in the final four minutes, but you can't rely on doing that all season long. And I'm sure Seif would like to have a little better competitive edge going into the clubhouse at halftime. First and ten on the Brown 35. In motion is Rucker. Seif swings it to Smith coming out of the backfield. Smith out of bounds, stopping the clock of the 40. Got about five in the play. Terry Beeson, 58, had the coverage on him, along with Keith Butler, number 53. And marked the ball right at the 40-yard line. And we're down to two minutes, 53 seconds to play in the first half. Brian Seip just reached another milestone in his career. He has completed 800 passes with that one. Quite an accomplishment for any man. This young man has several years left in his career. It would be making his mark in the NFL for the Cleveland Browns. Miller and Moriarty are the running backs. Seif cuts it loose, and he's got Dave Logan at the 40, and Logan is inside the 40 at the 38. Brought down with the linebackers, 53, Keith Butler and Terry Beeson. 
number 58. Big Dave Logan, the former Colorado All-American, a super athlete, is on the front end of the Brian Sight pass. Dave Brown covering Logan on his play. You'll see Brown trying to get over the shoulder, not make the tackle, but break up the pass. He took a chance. Logan caught it. Caught by the linebackers as he gets more yardage downfield inside the 40-yard line of Seattle. And they pick up 23 on that one. Dave Logan, ninth in the AFC in pass receptions at 572 yards going into this one. 17-yard average. Rucker in motion. Side play action. Gets it away. Hardy was about on him. This is Calvin Hill fighting for what he can get, and all he can get is at the 40 for a loss of a couple. Carl Eller, 71, who's in there now for the Seahawks, made the stop, and they lost a couple on that one. And we're down to the two-minute mark. In fact, we're less than that. A minute 54 in the first half. Seattle leading 16-3. to three. With a minute 54 seconds to go in the first half, Cleveland has a second and 12 from the Seattle 40-yard line. And on that last uh, pattern, George, you were commenting that Reggie Rucker was wide open. He was wide open, no doubt about it. Rucker in motion going to the left side of the field from his right spot position, took it down and in towards the post, and what the pros call a post pattern. Nobody near him for five yards. Let's see if Sipe comes back with that. He's not talking to Rucker now. He looks more like he's in Logan's direction. But one of these times, he's going to look at Reggie and say something to him about that same pattern. And I'll bet just anything, he comes back to Rucker on this play. Okay, he's talking to him right now. Number 33, Reggie right. Rucker, the 10-year veteran from Boston. This guy can really put some moves on you. And so can Dave Logan, for that matter. And so can Ozzie Newsom. Oh, boy. The Browns really spread it out with Logan, Rucker, Newsom, Calvin Hill, Cleo Miller, Mike Pruitt. Three backs that can hurt you on the front end of sight passes and the same with the wide receivers. Here we go. Logan and Rucker switching positions. Rucker going left, Logan right. There's Rucker. Rucker at the 22. First down. Gets up, goes down to the 20 yard line. We were talking about Rucker right here, a little different pattern, but they went right to him versus Dave Brown. You see Rucker coming down, butt nooking a little in the middle, looking back for the ball, and Sipes got it on target. Gain of 18. Clock running, a minute 28 to go in the first half. Sipe runs out of the pocket and right into Bill Gregory, number 77, the defensive right in. Now this is an offensive lineman's nightmare when you have a guy and you're blocking him out. As you see Sipe all the time in the world to throw, decides not to. Number 73, Deacon, has already pushed his man around the hole and Sipe steps right into him as Bill Gregory, I'm sorry, Bill Gregory makes a tackle that play, a big sack for the Seattle Seahawks. And it is second down and almost 20. In fact, it is second and 20. Clock showing a minute five and running. Sight back over the middle. Mike Pruitt at the 25. Mike Pruitt at the 20. And at the 19, down he goes. Brought down by Dave Brown, number 22. And the clock showing 49 seconds to go now. One timeout for Cleveland. They can't afford to waste one, but they'll be calling one shortly or the clock will run out. Gain of 12 in the play. Third down, about eight. Now we're down to 37 seconds. Seattle holding a 16-3 to lead. The Seahawks have been super in the first half. But the Browns starting to put the pressure on. Sight with a lot of time. Runs out of the pocket and looks and he throws back to the end zone. He's got Rucker, but it's intercepted. In the end zone by Keith Simpson, number 42. That stops it right there. Reggie Rucker was the intended receiver. Simpson stepped in front of him and picked it off, and the Seahawks have stopped the Browns. Sipe all the time in the world for his receivers to work open as Cleveland's offensive line does a brilliant job of blocking on this play. Can't find anyone. A credit to the Seattle secondary. As Sipe starts to scramble, he starts looking downfield, rolling to his left, throwing across field. He hangs the ball. And when he does that, number 42 Simpson comes right in front of Rucker, who was wide open until Simpson got there. Cakes the ball into the end zone. A big interception stops a crucial drive for Cleveland. Big play. Seattle's ball on their own 20. And Cleveland is down by 13 points before half. And Simpson's third interception is a big one. So the Seahawks, 37 seconds to go in the first half. Have a 16-3 lead. You gotta believe they'll play it cautious. Sherman Smith 
Out to the 25, Al Hunter, rather, out to the 25. Brought down by Dick Ambrose, number 52, the middle linebacker. And apparently the clock here is off because it is showing 37 seconds with the field. So the clock obviously is out of sync now. And we have reached halftime. That's the end of the first half. The score is... Okay, it's still 16-3, to and we'll be right back. And now as both teams have come back on the field here at Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, the 70-odd thousand partisan Browns fans are saying, can the cardiac kids do it again? Their Cleveland Browns have come from behind so many times, in fact, in five big ball games. They had miracle comebacks and finishes, including the one last week. But look what Seattle has done to Cleveland in the first half. Again, Seattle 154 yards passing, only 57 yards rushing. But the passing yardage is there, which is surprising against a Cleveland defense, which is supposedly fairly good against the pass, versus Cleveland's 91 yards passing on some big plays to the receivers, 63 yards rushing, similar to Seattle's in that category. Total yards, 211 in the first half for Seattle, and that's uh, approximately uh, 218 more than they had last week, Merle, versus 154 for Cleveland. Well, coming off that game last week, Jack Patera could have easily said, well, things can't get any worse. Well, they haven't. They have, com uh, they have completely turned it around from last week. Efren Herrera, who has booted a field goal of 34 yards in the first half, will kick it off to open the second half. And Cleveland has Dino Hall and company back there again. Little Dino, number 26. Herrera is poised and ready, and Seattle it away with Herrera's foot sending the ball down to Dino Hall at the 11-yard line to the 20 and down he goes at about the 23 and it was Michael Jackson the linebacker who pulled him down and we may have a flag dropped on that one a return of 12 yards by Dino Hall face mask is the call so Fred Silva the referee will march it off Five yards, not flagrant. On the run back, 55, face mask, first down. Dino Hall taking it up inside. You see Jackson grabbing him with his left hand. The officials say it was inadvertent, wasn't intentional. As a result, five-yard penalty instead of 15. Cleveland, first possession, third quarter. Rucker in motion. Sight to the far side to Dave Logan. And he has the reception near the 35-yard line. Dave Logan, the four-year veteran from Colorado, and Dave Brown, number 22, had the coverage on the play. They got seven yards. It'll be second down and three. This is how Cleveland starts its passing attack when they want to in the second half. That's the down and out pattern, setting it up for the longer patterns of down, out, and ups, which Logan is so good at catching. You'll probably see him come back to that pattern on the other side a little later on, but they'll set up their running game with a passing to start the second half. Logan to the right, Rucker in the slot right. Mike Pruitt, big hole! He's on the way! And Pruitt breaks a touchdown, Cleveland! So the Browns score in a hurry here in the third quarter, and the crowd cuts it loose. A 65-yard touchdown run, and Art Modell, the president of the Cleveland Browns, turns very happy on that one. Cleveland got lucky on this play. I shouldn't say lucky, but they were trying to set up some others. Instead, they got the big one to score right off the bat. Here's a picture of Sipe just before the snap. Pruitt, Pruitt hit the backside of that play, took it upfield with some good blocking in the offensive line, and scored. Cockroft. On the kick, we'll try to show you the play a little later after this extra point attempt. Logan will hold it. And now the Browns trail by only six as Croc Cockroft splits the uprights and the Browns score in a hurry. Here in the third quarter on a 65-yard touchdown run by Mike Pruitt. So we have a timeout with about 35 seconds or so gone. It took the Browns just a little more than a half minute 
to put seven points on the board here in the third quarter, and Don Cockrop will kick it off. And back deep for Seattle, 32, Jeff Moore, 34, Tony Green. And a moment ago, the Cleveland fans were yelling, defense, defense, defense. Tony Green on the floor. The 20, right up the middle, and Tony Green keeps it going across the 30 and out near the 33. A nice straight turn by Tony Green. Just before that fine return, here you see Seif giving it off to Pruitt on the left side of the line. Good blocking at the point of attack. Taking it up inside, he broke it loose all the way. When he gets that much of a step on linebackers and safety from bad angles, he's going to take it all the way as he did here. Cleveland was trying to set up a little play-action pass with that. Sometime in the future, they've used that play-action pass quite a bit. But the play busted through, and when it did, Pruitt took it all the way. Now Jim Zorn brings the Seahawks to the line of scrimmage. And he sends Pete's in motion. the middle for a yard or so. Mickey Sam, 78. The left tackle makes a stop and give him three. Three yards picked up on the play. Mickey Sam's a three-year veteran from South Carolina State at 6'5", 270 pounds. And that Cleveland interior line, meaning Sam's and either Dimmler or Bradley, have to compensate for the loss of Jerry Shirt, who has a staph infection of the knee and elbow and may be out for quite a while. Second and seven, Seattle. Screen to the tight end Bell, number 82. And Bell is across the 40, and Charlie Hall, 59, the left linebacker, brings him down short of a first down. He got four yards on the play, and it'll be third down and three. Bell could probably have gotten a little more yardage on that play, but his blockers were inside of him. He tried to take it to the sideline, but all of his blocking was behind him. As a result, Hall had no problem getting up to make the tackle. And now, Charlie Hall is out. Dave Graff is in. Jim Zorn, town of 1,858 yards. Third down three. Large in motion. down for Sherman Smith. Smith breaks it out to the 47 and Dick Ambrose, 52, the middle linebacker, pulls him down after his six-yard gain. A little confusion on the part of Cleveland in that play. Ambrose came to the sideline, came back in. He thought the nickel defense was coming in. It didn't. He went back in, but just in time to see Smith blow by him. He did get a hand on him and brought him down, but not before Smith got the first down. So Jim Zorn has started to move the Seahawks here in the third quarter. They're leading by a score of 16 to 10. Smith hit down the line. Buck down in the 43. And it was Rich Dimmler, 92, the rookie from USC, who made the tackle. A loss of three. Dimmler is playing right next to Jack Gregory, number 81. You see two people there trying to take Gregory and the linebacker, number 57, play Matthews on. Allows Dimmler to make penetration, and the youngster from US, or the youngster from USC does make a big play. Noted for his protection against Saran in that particular case, Gregory and Dimmler showed why they're holding down the right side of Cleveland's defensive line. Jack Gregory, a 13-year veteran, number 81, a farmer and rancher in Mississippi in the offseason. About 2,000 acres worth. Second, 13, Cleveland defense reacting again. Down goes Zorn to the 39. Dick Ambrose, the middle linebacker. Rich Dimmler, 92, the right tackle. And Zorn is chopped down for a loss of four. In the last two plays, Seattle has lost seven. Again, a little, it looked like a little bit of mix-up here in the backfield. Zorn steps up. Not knowing exactly what to do. It doesn't look like a real quarterback draw because you see Ambrose, number 52, stepping up there inside. So Zorn has to eat the football with a lot of weighted Cleveland Browns on top of him. Zorn, that little smile on his face is not one of pleasure, folks, as he goes down for a loss. Third down, 17. Moore and Hunter are now the running backs for the Seahawks. Zorn calls time as Cleveland showed him the blitz. And Zorn calls time. And we have a delay.
of the game. No timeout. Beg your pardon. Didn't hear the whistle. Delay of the game. Third down. All right, Zorn ran out of time. Jack Patera, always calm, cool, and collected on the sideline. Now it is third down, 22. You know, it looks if he's, if he's not calm, cool, and collected, he's sure taking it out of his gum, though. Mm -hmm. Here comes Gregory. Zorn stays in the pocket. Loses the football, and Dimler goes after it. Seattle recovers it. Number 78, Bob Newton. Check that. 76, Steve August, the right tackle, recovered the football. But Cleveland's defense has shoved the Seattle Seahawks into a fourth down and 22 situation. The two ends that time coming in. The offensive tackles for Seattle, Bebout and, and, and August, did a good job of holding Alzado and Gregory out, but they couldn't do that all day. As a result, they came around the horn, got to Zorn, he fumbled the ball, August made the recovery, but now Seattle has lost quite a bit of yardage and has to punt. Herman Weaver will pick it away for the Seahawks, and he bangs it downfield to Dino Hall, who takes it on the 40, gets up, comes back for about three or four more, and is covered quickly by Larry Pulowski and Art Kuhn. 37-yard punt the four-yard return. And we have 10-15 to go in the third quarter. Seattle 16, Cleveland 10. Saturday on Sports World, the action is the greatest as the Muhammad Ali Boxing Club squares off against the Mexico Boxing Club. Sports World Saturday on NBC. And it's getting a little cooler in Cleveland. But a little hotter on the field. The Browns trail... 16 to 10, but they have the ball. Great field position to Brown 43. Calvin Hill, second man through to the 48. Pulled down by middle linebacker Terry Beeson, number 58, and Michael Jackson, 55, the rookie linebacker from the University of Washington. A six yard gain by Calvin Hill, and he is filling some big shoes left by Greg Pruitt's injury, but if anybody can fill him, Calvin Hill can do it. Calvin Hill can do it all. He's done it before. He's a credit to the team. Artigliano loves him, says he'd like to have him come back every year, but as age progresses, he'll leave his mark on the Cleveland ball court. Second down, six for Brian Seip and the Browns. Mike Pruitt gets it again, but this time a good tackle and a saving tackle by Keith Simpson, number 42. The strong safety as it looked like Pruitt who ran 65 yards for a touchdown the last time he carried the ball. Picked up 12, but Simpson cut him down at the 40-yard line of Seattle. Well, let's see. He is now 795 yards for the season after that one, and he is over the 100-yard mark today. Mike Pruitt, well, he's at 99 anyway. First and 10 and the ball mishandled and the Browns will take a couple of yards loss on that one as Robert Hardy 75 and Mono, Manu Tuyasasopo 74 were right there to make sure Sipe wasn't going to go anywhere so he lost one yard second and 11. You know these these missed fumbles you're seeing are not really all the responsibility of the quarterback in the center it's getting colder here the hands are getting a little more numb, and as a result, you're going to have a mix-up like that on occasion. The team with a mit with a fewer mix-ups of that degree usually wins a ball game if it's close. Eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Cleveland trailing by six. Rucker is split wide to the left. Logan to the right. Sipe looking to Logan's side, but he goes back over the middle. Mike Pruitt down to the 20. And he's got a first down. Reggie Rucker came back as a blocker as Mike Pruitt who can catch the ball and then knows what to do when he gets it is brought down by Autry Beeman. They had a blitz going. Seattle decided to send their safety. As a result, Pruitt, you'll see him right over the middle in the open. Right there, not a person around him for 10 yards as he turns it upfield. Gets additional yardage before being brought down deep with the Seattle secondary. Down at the 21 yard or 20 and a half yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. Three receptions for 40 yards. A banner day for that man right there, Mike Pruitt as he makes another assault on a 100-yard rushing day, helping this club getting closer to the Seattle score, uh, Seattle goal line. First down after a 21-yard pickup. 
Calvin Hill plowing his way straight ahead behind the blocking up front, and he got about five yards on that one. And we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KING-TV, Seattle. Merle Harmon and George Coons with you at Cleveland's Municipal Stadium. Where the Browns are on the move again. They've scored here in the third quarter on a 65-yard touchdown run by Mike Pruitt on the second play of the third quarter. At halftime, Seattle led 16-3. It's now 16-10. And it's a second down, about five. Pruitt, no place to go, trying to get everything he can, and that's not too much as Terry Beeson belts him backward. I think he'll get about a yard. Keith Butler, 53, was in there to help out. Terry Beeson, 58, the middle linebacker. And the Houston Oilers are leading Oakland 21-17. to Houston with a 7-3 record, tied with Cleveland for the number two spot in the AFC Central. And Kansas City, would you believe this, 33-20 to in the third quarter over Pittsburgh. And wait till they put that one on the scoreboard in Cleveland. Pruitt is now at 100 yards. Detroit leads Tampa Bay 7-3. Cleo Miller is in now in the backfield for the Browns on third down. Cleo Miller in passing situations. Here, Here they go. come. Blitz on. Brian Seip gets it away. And it is flag down. Flags are down. Cornell Webster against Reggie Rucker. And 38, Cornell Webster saying, who, me? Keith Butler, the linebacker, coming from the right side, really had the heat on Brian Seif. Keith Simpson also coming up from the safety spot was there. Miller missed him. Miller missed him. As a result, he added pressure on Zor or on Seif. The pass over the head of the receiver, but again, the penalty will help Cleveland get way down with a first down on the Seattle seven-yard line. Ricky Feature, 83, has replaced Dave Logan as a wide receiver. And Robert Hardy, 75, is out with an ankle injury, will not be back today. As Cleveland has a first and goal in the Seattle 7. That's Pruitt. At the 5. Inside the 5. And bang down at about the 3. Manu, Tuyasa Sopo, 74. Bill Gregory, 77, making the tackle as Calvin Hill was leading the blocking for a six yard pickup. And it's second down and goal to go on the two yard line. As Mike Pruitt is over the 100 yard mark at 104 for 11 carries. It's conceivable that he might have 100 yards rushing and 100 yards pass receiving before this day is over. And he's a man that they worked with on his hands. They said he couldn't catch the ball when he came in. Now he's got the ball extremely well for that man right there, Sam Bertigliano, as he looks on the ball on the three-yard line. Second and goal. Hill and Pruitt are the running backs. Pruitt over the top, nailed at the one-yard line with a jolt by number 53, Keith Butler, the right linebacker. And Larry Pulowski, number 50, another linebacker also there. This is the way yardage should be to get come down here inside the five-yard line, and that's tough. You see bodies throwing themselves at the goal line, bodies throwing themselves in front of the goal line to stop the Charger Pruitt, who had a five-yard run at that particular spot, but Pulowski and Butler came up, stopped them just short of the goal line, and we're going to have some problems with turf at the open end of the end zone here. So if you see some grass flying, the footage is extremely slippery down here. Look at him stack in on third and goal. Flag down as the Browns didn't make it, but Seattle. Looked like the left side, somebody jumped on the left side. Could have been Pulowski, a linebacker, playing up there. But did the Browns draw him off? We'll wait and see. Fred Silva will tell us about that. Coming up later today on NBC, most of you will see the hard-charging Patriots take on the Orange Crush Denver Broncos in a battle between two top playoff contenders, and what a battle that should be. Pats lead the East, Denver tied with San Diego in the West. Well, Fred Silva's lost his mic. Bill Gregory, 77, I believe, was the man who uh, jumped the gun, and the ball advanced half the distance. Half the distance, the size of the football. Steve Grogan, by the way, is coming off a 350-yard passing game and a three-touchdown performance against Buffalo as he goes against the Broncos today over most of these stations right after this one is over. That ought to be a dandy. Like this one, huh? Hmm. Third and goal. Threw it 
on the pitch. Threw it at the goal line and in for the touchdown. Mike Pruitt scoring, Pat Moriarty, 25, his running back partner in there with a block. And the Browns are back in business. This is not a risky play, but not a high percentage play to get it across. You see the little flip out to Pruitt. He's got Moriarty in front of him for a block, but you can see him trying to get the ball in. A lot of penetration, a lot of hustle by Seattle's defense. But rather than take it up inside, they took it outside. Regardless of the percentage, they got the score. Now we've got ourselves a ball game. And Don Cockroft can put Cleveland ahead for the first time this afternoon. It is tied at 16. It is untied. The Browns take the lead. So they drive 57 yards on 11 plays. And Pruitt scores it. And the Cleveland fans are jubilant. We've got a timeout, and Cleveland is ahead 17 to 16. Well, the Cleveland Browns have moved in front by a single point. They're out in front 17 to 16 as Don Cockroft kicking that extra point a moment ago put Cleveland on top. They trail 16 to nothing. They've had a tremendous comeback here in this third quarter. Two touchdowns by Mike Pruitt, one for 65 yards and one from a foot out. 57 yards, 11 plays as Cockcroft will kick it away. And it'll be taken by Green, Tony at the 18. And Cleveland's special unit, led by Ricky Jones, special teams cover only an eight-yard return. There's Ricky Jones who made the tackle. So now Seattle will try to regain the momentum. Seattle dominated the game in the first half, particularly in the first quarter. They took the opening kickoff, just eight the clock, moved 66 yards, 13 plays, scored. With Smith going over, then Sherman Smith on a two-yard touchdown run, made it 13 to nothing in the second quarter. Herrera, 34-yard field goal, 16 to nothing. Cockcroft, three, uh, the field goal for three points for the Browns in the first half. Zorn's going to go all the way, and it's intercepted. It is picked up by Ron Bolton. Bolton down to the ground at the 33-yard line, and let's see if what's going on down there. A little extracurricular activity. Sam McCollum was the intended receiver. I think it fell incomplete. It did. So Bolton didn't hold on to it. McCollum had been unhappy. Gregory is unhappy. I'm still trying to figure out what Gregory's doing in the defensive secondary. You see a little play-action fake right there by Zorn. Alzado gets penetration and chases Zorin out of the pocket, rolling right, throwing the ball, not getting enough on it to get it over Bolton. As you see Bolton right there for the interception, good coverage on McCullen by him right there. Brings the ball down but drops it. Seattle got it back. It will be their ball on their own 25. Second down coming up for the Seahawks. Sherman Smith. Showing it up, almost busting it out of there, and he's out near a first down across the 35. Dick Ambrose, 52, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. He got about nine. Coming up later today on NBC, most of you will see those hard-charging Patriots battle the orange crush of the Denver Broncos between two of the top playoff contenders. The Bronco defense, the stingiest in the AFC West, has given up only 14.9 points per game this year. By the way, nobody has scored a touchdown on the Broncos in their last two home games. But Steve Krogan will test that today. The Pats offense is the second of the second best of the AFC. Third down one. Flag down. And Hunter carries for the first down if the play stands. It looked like Lyle Alzado jumping offside to Zorn. Pulled him off with that count. A man of Alzado's tenure in the league ought to know that he doesn't listen to the quarterback's count but watches the snap of the ball. The mistake cost Cleveland oh, a few additional yards, and I'm sure Seattle will take that and get the first down. They get a first down out of it any way you slice it, you but they, they'll pick up an extra yard by taking the penalty. At the 41. Defense, number 77, offside, first down. So Lyle Alzado, number 77, the nine-year veteran from Yankton who had all those great years with the Broncos, charged with the offside penalty. 72,440, the official paid attendance looking on today in Cleveland. 
Zorn fakes to Hunter. And throws to Sherman Smith coming out of the backfield. He had the ball in his fingertips, but he couldn't hang on. He's a little disgusted with himself. Oh, that, that pass was right there. Sherman should be a little bit. He's got to be thinking that was a big play. That was another first down. As we take a look at the replay, Zorn again back to throw. A good pass. Lays it right in there, right on the fingertips. But again, not enough stick him on the hands as Smith gets the ball. Sees a defender, Bolton, number 28, coming up to give him a shot and loses it. It is second and 10 on the Seattle 41. The Seahawks are trailing by 17 to 16 after leading 16 to nothing at one stage of the game. 319 to go in the third quarter. Rush is on Zorn. Alzado gets him. Well, Alzado and Jack Gregory have been uh, maligned a little bit for their pass rush, but there was nothing wrong with that one. Well, they sure will be maligned in this play. 81 from the bottom of your screen. Gregory coming up. Nick B about 63, taking him outside, but you'll see Alzado as Zorn tries to step up, beat his man August, number 76, whom you will not see in the picture, and bring down Zorn for a loss on the play. Alzado out of Yankton, again, coming over to the Browns, not having the greatest year in the world, but has definitely helped the defensive front wall of Cleveland. Loss of 10, third down and 20, third sack of the day for the Browns. Jim Zorn ready. Again, the rush is on. He runs away from Gregory. Fires on the run, and at the midfield stripe, Tony Benjamin tried to pull one off the ground, but he couldn't come up with it. And 47, Ricky Jones was there to cover him. So now the Seahawks, who are having the same problem the Browns had in the first half, will have to punt it away. It was in the first half the Browns just couldn't put it together. Nothing worked. Herman Weaver kicks it away. Dino Hall fielding it, and down he goes in the 37. Don Dufek, 25 on the special teams, was down there on the coverage. A kick of 34 yards and no return. And we've got a timeout with two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Cleveland is leading Seattle 17-16. to 16. The Cleveland Browns might set an all-time home attendance record this year. They're packing them in over 72,000 here this afternoon to watch the Browns, the cardiac kids, and they have done it again. At least they've come from behind, but we got a long way to go in this game. But right now the Browns have the lead, 17-16. The ball of the Brown, 37. Dino Hall is now the tailback in the aisle. This is Dino at the 40. 45. 27 up through Beeman and 42 Keith Simpson. The two safeties make the tackle as little Dino Hall got about eight on that one. You know, when you've got a guy the size is as diminutive as, as Hall taking the, uh, taking the ball up in there, all you can do is say that he's really exciting the offensive lineman. They want to block for him. The backs want to block when they see a little guy like that hustling. He's going to be the kind of a guy that will give another spark to Cleveland as he comes to the sideline and is replaced. He's the kind of a guy that can give a spark to Cleveland to keep a drive going, as he did there. Calvin Hill is now the tailback for the Browns. And the handoff to Mike Pruitt. Flags go down as he bangs to the midfield stripe. Manu Tuiasisopo, 74, makes the tackle after a five-yard pickup, but holding is indicated against Cleveland. The Browns are 7-3, tied with Houston for second place in the AFC Central. Pittsburgh with an 8-2 record. Last report losing to Kansas City. Pittsburgh will be in San Diego next week, and that blockbuster will be televised on NBC. Holding offense, number 63. Second down. Cody Rison, number 63, the left guard, guilty of holding. Number 63, the left guard, Cody Rison. You can see him pushing his man out. Unfortunately, as he was pushing him out, he was holding him in. So as a result, the penalty called. Pruitt taking it up inside, but to no avail. Losing 10 on the play as the Browns come up with second down. Second down, 12 for Cleveland. The Browns lead 17 to 16, a minute 48 to go in the third quarter. Passing formation. Sight, four men downfield. And at the midfield stripe, Reggie Rucker couldn't hang on to it. He's trying to come back. It would have been a great catch if Reggie had, had 
gotten his hands a little better on the ball, but again, the throw a little bit off. As a result, Reggie diving for it, not getting to it. When the Browns split those backs and put their two backs behind their offensive tackles, they have a tendency to want to throw the ball more. On that play, we had a chance to call it before it started out. Let's see if Sype comes back with the same type of formation. Dino Hall, 26, has come in for Calvin Hill at the tailback spot. Mike Pruitt, 43, up front of the eye as the fullback. Logan to the left, Rucker to the right. Now they'll split the back. He finds room for about four, but it's fourth down as Robert Hardy, 75, made the tackle. He got about five yards on the play, and it is fourth down seven as Cleveland will have to kick the ball away, and Johnny Evans comes in to do the punting. Johnny Evans out of North Carolina State. That's Tony Green back for the reception. Evans with a 41-yard average for the year. And the sun comes out of the eyes of Tony Green here in Cleveland. The first time we've seen the sun today. Tony Green lets it bounce. I don't think he could see the ball. He wasn't going to take any so. chances. I don't think so either. The sun came out just as Cleveland went into punt formation. A 47-yard kick. And Tony Green not wanting to take any chances. Having trouble picking the ball up. Let the ball roll. And Jim Zorn... And his pals will take over with 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cleveland ahead by one. Next Sunday, NBC has a great day of football for you. First, join NFL 79 as they examine the knee injury, followed by the Jets versus Walter Payton and the explosive Chicago Bears, or see the Miami Dolphins defense challenge Brian Seip and the Cleveland Browns right here. Then it's the long-awaited Steelers-Chargers clash on the West Coast. Check your listings for the time and the games in your area. Zorn to Smith and Sherman who has scored two touchdowns today for Seattle takes it out uh, across the 25 to about the 26 he got seven on the play the Seattle could have started with a little better field position but again we have some of the elements working against you the sun coming out Green letting the ball bounce Evans getting off probably his best punt of the day bro. all those things seem to want to put Seattle in the hole but they came right back got some good yardage about eight yards on that play Facing second down on their own 26-yard line. Let's see what they come up with now. 47 seconds to go in the third quarter. Everyone knows that Jim Zorn and Steve Largen can turn a game around in a hurry. But he stays on the ground on a quick opener to Al Hunter. And the former Notre Dame star goes to about the 31, 32-yard line. A four-yard pickup. Dick Ambrose, 52, the middle linebacker, the five-year veteran from Virginia, making the tackle for the Cleveland Browns. And they'll move the sticks ahead. First down. First down for Seattle. And the clock running with 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. The sun has gone behind the clouds again. We see a little blue sky upstairs here and there. Largent splits to the left. Davis has the coverage on. Largent goes back in motion now. Sherman Smith. Smith to the 34. Tom Darden makes the tackle as the gun sounds ending the third quarter. Smith got three on the carry. And so the Seahawks, who led at halftime, but trail at the end of three, the end of the third quarter. And the score is Cleveland 17, Seattle 16. Stay tuned for quarter number four. We'll be right back. Thousand in Cleveland getting ready for the fourth quarter. Merle Herman and George Coons with you. We're checking that Pittsburgh-Kansas City score. We had a report that Kansas City had taken a big lead over Pittsburgh, but that just doesn't sound right. So we're going to check that out, and we'll bring it along to you just as soon as possible. Seattle starting the fourth quarter, trailing by one at 17-16. to 16. Jeff Moore and Al Hunter are the running back. The ball in the 33-yard line of Seattle. They eliminate the running backs, put them on the wing, as it's an all-out passing formation, and Jordan is on the run. Throwing on the run, throwing long, and it is not caught by Steve Largent, but he gave it a good effort, a real good effort. Oliver Davis, 21, had the coverage on him, and Largent might be claiming hand guarding or face guarding. Largent right here, not all the speed in the world. You'll see 21 Davis chuck him there. That's the chuck he's entitled to. Largent a little look in back there, thinking he can draw Davis all out. But this is just excellent coverage as the defensive back stays with him all the way. A fine cat, catch attempt as Largent looks around the ball right there. But good coverage by Davis on the play. Largent a little discouraged that he didn't get it. But you can't 
make great catches all the time. You miss that one. And so it is third down and eight coming up, and we do have the correction on the Pittsburgh-Kansas City game. It is Pittsburgh 23-3. to So the previous score that we had was erroneous. The Steelers are winning it. Pitt. Third down. Jeff Boer taking it across midfield down to the 46-yard line of the Browns. Clinton Burrell, 49, finally got him out of bounds. Jeff Moore, a rookie from Jackson State. Here's that Olympic address again. Send your tax-deductible contribution to help our American Olympic athletes. U.S. Olympics, Post Office Box 1980P, Cathedral Station, Boston, Mass, 02118. Gain of 21 yards on that pass play to Moore. And this time he has got number 83, Steve Rabel, a wide receiver who came into the game and he beat Oliver Davis. And he takes the ball all the way down to the six-yard line. Steve Rabel is the fastest of the wide receivers for Seattle. What a good catch. Rabel is, as Merle said, the fastest of the people. Again, working on Davis. Not coverage as good as last time on Largent as Rabel comes down with a big catch inside the 10-yard line. They're moving the sticks down now. It's on the sixth. So Seattle coming back, trying to score at the six-yard line of Cleveland. We'll have some goal line attempts now. Jim Zorn just advanced that ball 40 yards on the pass to Steve Rabel. And the Seattle Seahawks, to nobody's surprise, are coming right back in this game after leading 16 to nothing at one stage, now trailing 17 to 16, have a first and goal. Al Hunter, touchdown! Blast the last six for the TD. And Seattle is back in front. They just ran that ball right down Cleveland's throat. You'll see Zorn here. Good line blocking. Yarno coming off. Number 51. Number 61. Lynch a good block. Everybody moving their people back. You see a corridor there. Hunter gets up into it. And as a linebacker, Ambrose grabs onto his feet. The momentum of Hunter carries him forward over the goal line. Seattle now in front to score 22-17 with Herrera trying the extra point. It took Seattle seven plays to go 81 yards. Here's Herrera. It is not good. It is off to the left. And so Herrera misses the extra point. And with 14 minutes and 32 seconds left to play in this game, Seattle is back in front. It's Seattle 22 and the Browns 17. Coming up later today on NBC, most of you will see the explosive New England Patriots meet the Orange Crush of Denver. Patriots have averaged 362 yards a game as Herrera kicks it off and rolls her downfield about the 30. It is covered for the Browns at about the 30-yard line. I don't think that was an onside kick. Well, I don't think so, but Herrera will plan something like that. If you get it between that front wall and those deep receivers, you, your outside people have a chance to get down there and cover it. Regardless, it's a non-returnable ball, and you have a chance to get it again. Well, the Browns are behind once more in this ball game, and we have an injury for the Cleveland Browns. Brian Sipe has hit 10 out of 21 for 129 yards and two touchdowns. And uh, Jim Zorn is 11 out of 23 for 182 yards. There's Brian Sipe talking with Sam Ritigliano. Cleo Miller, number 30, is on the sideline and is the injured player. Here's a chance. Cleo Miller trying to get the ball. His own man coming over trying to help him. But you see all these people going for it out of the left corner of the screen. One of the one of his own men, one of the Cleveland Browns, running into Miller. As a result, he's injured on hopefully not seriously on the play. But they've got him off on the side now, and they're going to be taking him to the bench for further examination. Well, Dan Dornick of the Seahawks out with an injury today. And now Cleo Miller has gone to the sideline for the Cleveland Browns as Brian Sipe comes on. Dave Logan splits wide to the left. Reggie Rucker goes to the right as the Browns, who trail by 22-17, put it in play at the Brown 30. Fake to Pruitt. Beautiful fake to Pruitt. Now the pursuit is on sight. 
as he goes up the sideline and out of bounds. Chased out by Keith Simpson, number 42. He is out of bounds at about the 34 and a gain of three by Brian Seip. You no, know, he can't ask for much better protection than that. The Seattle secondary doing a good job on the wide receivers, the linebackers, and everyone else picking up the burden a little bit and realizing they're not getting the pass rush that they would like. So as a result, the coverage is there. Although Seip has the time, no open receivers. The ball on the 33. Seattle ahead by a score of 22 to 17. The Seahawks showing a lot of poise this afternoon. Sight intended for Logan. He's got it at midfield. The flag goes down to the 49-yard line. Autry Beeman, 27 on the tackle. Dave Logan managed to hold on to that football and pick up 17 yards. And let's see what the flag's about. It's a face mask to boot as Logan... Uh is signaling to the sidelines. Anyway, the officials are conferring. Beeman a little upset. That's what it is. So the Browns will pick up some more yards. It's and a this biggie. is a biggie. Yes, sir. This is just great concentration on Logan's part. On the tackle, 27 defense, face mask, first down. Now that's just great concentration on Logan's part. He had the ball up there, tried to one-hand it. Beeman tried to get it. When he couldn't get the ball, he went for the face mask and just pulled Logan down with him. Seattle has been hit with nine penalties for 64 yards. The ball at the 34 of Seattle. Hardy moved. Chase is on, and it's incomplete on the 34. Intended for Dino Hall and Keith Buck. Had the coverage on Dino, but a flag was dropped. And the penalty is against Seattle. Robert Hardy, 75, the defensive left tackle, made a move. Defense, number 75, offside. First down. So Hardy caught for being offside. It's first down and five on the Seattle third. 15 minutes and 3 seconds to go in the ball game with Jack Patero, who was smiling a moment ago, now hopes his defense can stop Cleveland. That's 20 yards of penalties in two plays for Seattle. Rucker in motion to the Browns. Mike Pruitt. Back down again as Pruitt goes for the first down. Terry Beeson, 58, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Holding against Cleveland. And the Buffalo Bills are have beaten the New York Jets now, 14 to 12. As Joe Ferguson came up with a touchdown pass today, he is the percentage pass leader. 54, holy. All right, Cleveland. Tom Delio on the center, number 54, guilty of the holding call. So Buffalo's beating the Jets 14 to 12 today. Buffalo now five and six for the year. The Jets are five and six. The draw. Look at Blue go up the middle. He is down to the 11 yard line. And up three Beaver makes the tackle on Mike Pruitt. Beautiful draw. Gain of 27 yards. They took something out of the Seattle playbook. Pruitt. Right there as the Sipe stepped back, gave him a little bit of a quick draw here as we look at it again. You'll see Sipe stepping back, Pruitt moving over. Good hole at the point of attack. DeLeo trying to get out of number 58. Beeson gets enough of him to allow Pruitt to get by. As a result, Pruitt comes up with some great moves. Beeman coming over to get the tackle, getting a little help from number 55. Michael Jackson in good pursuit. 14 rushes, over 100 yards. Mike Pruitt is having another outstanding day. And Dino Hall is yanked down behind the line of scrimmage by Dennis Boyd, number 68, the defensive left end, the three-year veteran from Oregon State. And he lost five yards on the play. Dennis Boyd, injured earlier in the season, got a starting call today ahead of Carl Eller, big 6'6", 255-pounder. It'll be second down, 15. The Browns... 
trailing in the game 22 to 17 after going ahead 17 to 16. Boyd is now playing left tackle beside Eller, so let's see if they're moving him back inside to get a little more run support from that position. Sight in the pocket, incomplete. Intended for Dave Logan, number 85, and Don Dufek, 25, had the coverage. So Brian Seip now comes up with a third down and 15 for the Cleveland Browns. Mike Pruitt has rushed for 134 yards this afternoon for the Browns, including a 65-yard touchdown scamper on the second play of the second half. And that brought life to the Browns. They went on to uh, score again with Pruitt going into the one-foot line. Cockcroft, uh, Cockcroft's extra point made it 17-16. That's the way it was at the end of the third quarter. And then the Seahawks came roaring back to score and take the lead. Third and 15 for Cleveland. And down goes Seif. Carl Eller making the tackle. and George Coons welcoming you to Cleveland's Municipal Stadium where Seattle leads Cleveland 22 to 17. Seattle led at one time 16 to nothing, 16 to 3 at the half. Then in the third quarter, Cleveland came to life on the second play of the third quarter. Mike Pruitt scored on a 65-yard touchdown run, came back, scored from one foot out, and then Cleveland moved ahead 17 to 16. Here's Don Cockroft trying to get the Browns a little closer now from the 35. It'll be a 45-yard effort, and the distance looks good, and it is good. No good. It is not good. He missed it. So Don Cockroft mixed, misses a 45-yard field goal attempt, and the score stays the same. Timeout in Cleveland, and it's Seattle 22, the Browns 17. A chilly day in Cleveland, but an exciting football game has kept things warmed up throughout the afternoon. The Seattle Seahawks take over at their own 27-yard line. Jim Zorn makes go right upstairs. He's got Hunter and Moore in the backfield. He stays on the ground to Hunter. Quick over. There he goes. At the field. 45, 40, 30, 25, 20, 10. He is down at about the 7-yard line. Run Bolton, 28, caught Al Hunter from behind finally. And the former Notre Dame star takes Seattle right down deep into Cleveland territory with a 71-yard run. Watch the right guard take on number 78. Mickey Sims blows him out of the way. Hunter hits the hole right behind it on that quick opener. Takes it up back. Eludes a linebacker. Eludes number 22, Clarence Scott. He's off to the races. Number 57, Clay Matthews, trying to catch him but not making up any ground at all. Finally, Ron Bolton, 28, applies the first hit, brings him down, but not after the ball gets off. All the way down to the Cleveland six-yard line. Seattle taking control on a big play by that man right there, Al Hunter. And Hunter scored from six yards out the last time. This is Jeff Bull, and he goes nowhere. Lyle Alzado, 77, the defensive left end, stacks it up for the Browns. One thing on that last play, let's give credit to the offensive line again. Bob Newton just blew Mickey Sims out. Number 78, Newton coming over from the Bears. A great block on that play, which sprung Al Hunter. Jack Patera's got to be a little happier as he works that gum further, trying to look nonchalant, but a little pleased with the way his ball club has come back. Second and goal. Large in motion. This is Hunter. one. As he made his cut, he saw his foot slip just ever so little, but he regained his balance and carried the ball down to about the one. Tom Darden, 27, made the tackle. Al Hunter again getting the ball going right, and as we mentioned earlier, the open end of the field sodded recently. The sod is not completely set. As he tries to make his cut, his right foot will slip, his left foot will slip, his right foot will slip again. He still gets upfield, trying to maintain balance, but brought down short of the goal line. Now Al Hunter and Seattle has the ball on the one. Sherman Smith is in there. Sherman Smith, touchdown Seattle. And the Mariners come right back charging hard with Hunter's 71-yard gallop setting up this touchdown. And so Seattle 
goes up by a score of 28 to 17. Again, running it right inside. Smith, six foot four, 225, taking the ball, running it right into the offensive line as you see him on the right side of your screen. The hole there, untouched, going into the end zone. Good blocking at the point of attack for Seattle as they get the ball in the end zone again to score now 28-17. Herrera, the extra point. And he's got it. Four plays, 73 yards on that one. And a big run by Al Hunter. So, here in Cleveland, the Browns will need a miracle finish now. We have a timeout with 9.29 to play. Seattle leads 29-17. to Efren Herrera will kick it off for Seattle. Seattle leading 29-17. Dino Hall is back deep for the Cleveland Browns. Again, he kicks it on the ground. The Browns have a little trouble covering the ball, but they do at the 30. Now I'm beginning to think it is intentional, George. The last two kicks. Matt Miller, 71, covered it. Well, you've got a guy like Hall back there, number two in the NFL in punt returns. You've got to realize they're very cautious of that, maybe practicing. So Sam Rotigliano, knowing now that his Browns have to pull off another miracle finish, as they did last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. They did it in a little more than four minutes to come up with a big win, their seventh of the year. And they have been able to stay tied with Houston for second place in the AFC Central. Next week, the Browns will play Miami right here. At the 30, Brian Sight. Swings it. That ball intended for Pruitt. I don't know if his arm was hit or not, but the ball went sailing anyway. And Brian Sight has an incompleted pass. It'll be second down and 10. Sight looked like he tried to throw it away intentionally. He saw the linebackers going over to Pruitt's side, and as a result, decided the best thing to do would be to get rid of it. Coming up next on NBC, most of you will see the Patriots against the Broncos in a battle between two top playoff contenders, and that should be some battle. Craig Morton's coming off a big game for uh, Denver, going 17 out of 26 last week for 233 yards. And, of course, Rogan hit for 350 last week. Now let's see if Seif can hit on second and ten. Up the middle, and it's underthrown to Ozzie Newsom, and Newsom was out there. Newsom was flat open. The ball was just underthrown. Seattle had five defensive backs in there, knowing that Cleveland's got to start throwing the ball. Even with five backs in there, Newsom found the seam, got open, but Seif just flat underthrew him. So now it is third down for Cleveland. And checking into the backfield is Cleo Miller. Going out is Mike Pruitt. Passing situations, Miller comes in. It should indicate what Cleveland's going to try to do. By the way, Robert Hardy, number 75, the defensive left tackle who was injured, just left the field on crutches. We'll go for x-ray. Side pass in time, and incomplete on the 42 flag down. Against Cornell Webster, he had the coverage on Reggie Rucker, the intended receiver. So the Browns will pick up a first down. Cornell Webster, the third-year man from Tulsa. Guilty. Defensive pass interference. Defensive pass interference, number 38. First down. Here's a wide shot of the defensive backs. Webster at the top part of your screen. You see the two receivers running down. Rucker number 33 right there. You won't be able to see it. It wasn't his right hand. It was his left hand that was on Rucker's back. That's what the official called. The official being right there saw the whole play. Good call. Willis Adams now in. A rookie as Sight goes all the way but incomplete down to the 10-yard line. And that was Willis Adams who just came in, the rookie from Houston. He replaced Rucker, and Seif was going for the home run ball. Adams at 4-4 speed, first round draft choice this year. Definitely a man that can fly, and Seif knows that he'd wish he could fly just a little faster to get in under that ball he threw up there for him. Now it is second and ten for the Browns, and the Brown 44 and the clock is stopped with eight minutes, 58 seconds left to play. Seattle leading 29 to 17. Seattle led 16 to nothing, 16 to three at the half. Cleveland led 17 to 16 at the end of three. Now it's been Seattle in the fourth quarter with a pair of touchdowns. Second and ten. 
This time it is complete. And it's completed to Mike Pruitt coming out of the backfield near the midfield stripe. Keith Simpson, 42, the strong safety, made the tackle. A gain of six, and it's third down four coming up for the Browns. You know, Sype really doesn't have to go that long. He's still got eight and a half minutes to go before the end of the game. He can take those short passes to the backs and move the ball downfield, rely on his defense to get it back, which they're paid to do, and try to get it in again. That time he hit Pruitt. He was open, no problem at all. Now let's see what he does out of a passing-type formation again. And Ricky Feature, 83, has come in as a wide receiver, replacing Reggie Rucker. He set right. And in motion back to the left side. Third and four. Sight incomplete on the 45-yard line. And it was Calvin Hill. Again, the pass not well thrown. Michael Jackson, the linebacker, 55, had the coverage in Cleveland as a fourth down and three at midfield. And it doesn't look as if they're going to punt, bro. No, sir. Brian Sype is staying on the field. Eight minutes, eight seconds left to play in the game. The Browns are down 29 to 17. Sam Rotigliano has made the decision. Go. And here it is. This could be the turning point. And now Sype wants a timeout. They want to think about this one a little bit. Brian Sype faced with a fourth down and almost almost four, about three, three and a half, is coming to the sideline to talk to Sam Rotigliano. And you know, wait a minute, Coach. Uh, Let's run this one by again and see what we can do about this. Thing. Well, it is a big play, one of the biggest in the game to date, and I'm sure he wants to confer with Rutigliano to make sure they're on the same page before he goes out and executes. All right, we've got a timeout. Seattle leading 29-17 today on NBC. Most of you will see the battle between New England and Denver. Teams have identical records 7-3. and three. The Pats lead the AFC East. Denver is tied in the West with San Diego. Here's that Pittsburgh, Kansas City score, and Terry Bradshaw is it for three touchdowns today. And that is a final. Steelers win it 30 to 3. Miami shelling Baltimore 19 to nothing. Steelers now are 9 and 2. Rucker in motion. Fourth down. Sipes going to go for it. He's going to get it. He is out of bounds in the 39 yard line. Seattle chased out by Autry Beeman, but Sipe knew where he was going. He got 10 yards on the play, and I kind of think that was run. Well, you know, every time you see all this congestion in the middle and everybody dropping off as fast as they were, it leaves that void in there between the defensive line and the secondary, and Sipe, knowledgeable as he is, took advantage of it. Also knowledgeable as he is, when he saw the traffic coming back, he got out of bounds, but not before first down was had. So, Brian Seibs, six rushes, 31 yards. Ricky Feature, 83, is down as a wide receiver. He has replaced Reggie Rucker. Logan will go to the right. Ozzie Newsom will split to the left. And Feature will go in the slot right. The draw. Good. Banging hard for Yardy. Perry Beeson, 58. Keith Butler, 53. The linebackers make the tackle. A flag on the play as Pruitt goes... For about eight yards. It's against Seattle, another five yard penalty. Defense, number 58, on the tackle. First down. And Terry Beeson, the middle linebacker from Kansas, gets the face pass call. Again, Snipe, uh, Snipe taking the snap. Uh, the same draw that worked so well previously. Pruitt gets the ball heading upfield. You'll see Beeson coming into the picture momentarily right there, making the tackle. Grabbing the face mask as he goes down. The official ruling it wasn't intentional, but the grab was made. Five yards, first down. From the 26, Sipe will go to the air. He's going for Newsom. Oz, he's got it out of bounds inside the five. On the three, Dave Brown, 22. The quarterback had the coverage. You're looking at a wide receiver tied in who just caught a pass for 23 yards. Bear Bryant called him the Wizard of Oz at Alabama. One of the greatest athletes he said he ever had at Alabama. Boy, this guy, wide receiver, tied in either one. He can do it. Well, you were looking at a close play, too. Some chalk was kicked up as Newsom went out of bounds. The official right there ruling he was in bounds. Today, three receptions, 61 yards. Sipe puts that ball up to all his receivers. Newsom coming up with a big catch, as he's done in other games this year. First and goal on the three of Seattle. Seattle leading 29-17. to 17. in the end zone, but 
Seif behind good blocking. He had two pulling blockers in front of him, and Seif goes in to score. Robert E. Jackson, 68, led the blocking, and Seif is in. A well-designed play from an offensive standpoint. He's got the op option of running and passing as he steps out. You'll see number 68, Robert Jackson, out there with him. He decides to run, tells Jackson he's going. A good block there, number 38, Webster by Jackson. Allows Seip to get in, greet it inside to the goal line by Beeson, number 58, but too little too late. Browns are back on the scoreboard, 29-23 with Cockroft for the extra point. Logan to hold. Kicks it through. So, with seven minutes, 41 seconds left in the game. Plenty of time for a lot of wild action. 29-24, Seattle. Next Saturday, NBC Sports World is a great lineup of events. There's a lot of time left in this game for a lot of scoring. 29-24, Seattle leading. I said 17, wrong. Houston and Oakland. And that's a final. Houston winning 31-17. So Houston, now with 8-3, and three. Cleveland still trailing in the game, and will have to come from behind to go 8-3, and three. Pittsburgh has won, Steelers are now 9-2, and two, still leading the FC Central. Now, will Cockroft kick it away, or will it be an onside kick? Well, Seattle definitely feels like it's going to be an onside kick, they've got their onside kick receiving team in, with nine men up by the... By the 45-yard marker of Cleveland expecting Cockroft to go with that onside kick. 29-24 Seattle. He pops it. That's Green. Moore, rather. Jeff Moore is brought down at about the 17 by Clinton Burrell, a return of 11 yards. And now, the Brown defense will be called upon to stop Jim Zorn and the Seahawks. It's a formidable task as we have a Brown player down out in the field. Good coverage, Cockroft baiting him into the special teams type onside kick team, leaving no blocking back. As a result, Seattle starting from their own 17-yard line. The Browns defense right now, big series as Zorn comes in the huddle to tell his cohorts what he plans to do to get him out of this hole. If Cleveland could stop him and force a punt, they will have good field and plenty of time to get back in the ball game. Jeff Moore, 32, Al Hunter, 24 are the running backs for Seattle. Largent comes in motion. Zorn will go to Moore, going back the other way, and he is knocked off his feet by number 57, Clay Matthews, the linebacker. The game about one, second down, nine. Jeff Moore, a rookie from Jackson State. Clock showing, seven minutes, seven seconds remaining in the game. The crowd with a chant, defense, defense, defense. Well, this crowd has seen their team do this many, many times. They call them the cardiac kids for a very good reason. This is a typical Cleveland game of this year. Zorn, again, having to get his ball club out of a hole, at least far enough downfield to get good field position for their defense. This crowd on its feet, 72,000 plus. The column split to the right, second and nine for the Seahawks. Zorn comes back to Jeff Moore out of the backfield. He's at the 29. Jeff Moore has the first down. Brought down by Ron Bolden, 28, the left cornerback, and left linebacker, Charlie Hall, number 59. So Jim Zorn goes upstairs. The thing he can do very, very well. He got 13 on that one. Coach Patera probably breathing a little easier. Every yard he gets is a yard farther that Cleveland has to go if they should get the ball back. Six minutes, eight seconds left in the game. Merle Herbert and George Coons with you in Cleveland. Al Hunter and Hunter gets a couple. 92, Rich Dimmler, 52, Dick Ambrose in there on the tackle for the Cleveland Browns. Ball is placed right on the 30-yard line. Now, these are situations, too, where Seattle would much rather keep the ball on the ground, running it, keeping the clock moving, so that that clock can work in their favor. Now, with 5.39 to go, Cleveland's got to stop the offensive advance in Seattle, get the ball back, and then score. That's a big task, especially if you can move the ball on the ground. Second, about 10. Largent split to the left. Rush 
his arm. Soren runs out of it. He's at the 40. First down. Goes near the 44-yard line. Jim Zorn takes Seattle to the 44, brought down by Tom Garden, number 27. The strong safety, but Zorn gets 14 yards on the play and another first down. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KING-TV, Seattle. For those of you who have tuned in to watch the New England-Denver game, we'll be going there right after this one is over. And right now, this one is a barn burner with 4.43 to go. Seattle leading 29-24. This is Jack Moore of the Seahawks. Out of bounds on the 48-yard line in Seahawk territory. Seattle has really put on quite a show today, and so have the Cleveland Browns, for that matter. Seattle led at one time 16 to nothing, 16 to 3 at the half. Cleveland led at the end of the third quarter, 17 to 16. Here in the fourth quarter, Seattle has scored twice to go ahead 29-17. Moments ago, Brian Seip scored on a three-yard touchdown run to cut the margin 29-24. It is second down six as Jim Zorn goes to the sideline to talk to the coaching staff. The Seattle Seahawks, obviously, a turnaround ball club from last week when they met won a minus seven against the Los Angeles Rams to a man they said they were embarrassed in the ball game, and it would never happen again. Well, today they came right out and took charge against the Cleveland Browns, scoring in the first possession after the kickoff, driving 66 yards. And Jim Zorn has had quite a day. He's had quite a day again. When you get a minus seven yards total offense in the previous week, everything you do has got to be positive. You can't really make that many mistakes. As Zorn comes back to the huddle, he can be proud of an offensive team that's put 29 points on the board and a defensive team that's held the Browns pretty well. NBC brings two spectacular suspense movies to TV for the first time. Tonight, Al Pacino stars in an unforgettable role, Dog Day Afternoon. And tomorrow night, Gregory Peck and Leah Remick star in the thriller, The Omen. Dog Day Afternoon tonight, The Omen tomorrow night. Two thrilling television events, both on NBC. Merle Harmon and George Coons with you in Cleveland. They're going to get all those cleats cleaned out so they don't have any problems slipping. As you can see, the turf is being torn up in the middle of the field, and that dirt gets clogged on their cleats. They start losing their footing. They don't get their blocks. Backs don't run. That is one thing that Seattle cannot afford at this time. All right, at the 48-yard line with four minutes, 36 seconds left, it is second down, six for the Mariners. John Yarno is up over the ball. This is what Jim Zorn has done today. 219 yards. Here come the Browns on the blitz. Zorn gets it away to Moore. Out of the backfield of midfield. Down into Brown territory. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And if they mark that ball in the 45, and they may not now, it might be a little bit shy of the 45, then... It'll be questionable that it is a first down. It will be marked on the 47. So it is shy of a first down by maybe the length of two footballs. You know, when they blitz those linebackers, as they did on that play, those little flat passes to the backs are deadly because the deep backs are the ones that have to stop them. As a result, good yardage on that play. We'll see what Zorn wants to do now. Third and short. Al Hunter, who had a big 71-yard run setting up a touchdown and then scored prior to that on a six-yard touchdown run, did not make it this time. He is filling in for Dan Dornick, who's out with an injury. But he has done a super job, but this time the Brown defense was equal to the task. Well, I said he didn't make it. We might have been premature. Here come the sticks. Any part of the ball will do it. This will be a big measurement as far as Cleveland's concerned with 4.22 to go in the game. Each second ticking off is a vital second that Cleveland loses. The, Mar the Mariners do have, or rather the uh, Seahawks do have the first down. Here you'll, see Hunter take, here you'll see Hunter taking the ball up in there. Watch the hit by Ambrose, 52, as he gets in there by the line of scrimmage. Just buries him down into the pile. Dick Ambrose having a stellar year this year. That's one of the reasons why. But Seattle did get the first down. Contain, maintains control of the ball. Four minutes to go in the game. Seattle, a 
as we said earlier, has played with a lot of poise today. Al Hunter slips back to the 50, covered immediately by 27, Tom Darden, as he lost four yards on the play. Our statistician today, Don Dravis, our spotters have been Pete Halvin, John Kutchko. They've done an outstanding job for us. Second down, 14. Al Hunter has seen a lot of playing time today because of the injury to Dan Dornick. Steve Rabel, number 83, just stepped into the ball game, usually coming in in sure passing situations, the third wide receiver. Let's see what uh, Seattle has in mind as they go split wide left and wide right with Rabel. Second and 14. Jeff Moore hit by Mickey Sims, number 78. And he got maybe two. The Denver Broncos have moved ahead of the New England Patriots by a score of 7 to nothing. We'll be switching to that game just as soon as this one comes to an end. New England and Denver each with 7-3 and three records. Denver tied with San Diego for the lead in the AFC West. New England leads the East. And that will be an explosive ball game. It will be coming to you. Most of you will see that game just as soon as this one is over. Third down coming up for Seattle, and the clock showing two minutes and 55 seconds left. Each team has two timeouts remaining, or times out if you will. Jack Patera talking to his quarterback Jim Zorn. Patera saw a 16 to nothing lead vanish. Cleveland went ahead 17 to 16 at the end of the third quarter, and then he saw his team explode on two quick drives to put two touchdowns on the board, only to be answered by Brian Sipes guiding Cleveland 70 yards on 10 plays at a touchdown with 7:41 remaining. That made it 29-24, and that's the way it is right now. You know, uh, San Francisco. We just saw him looking on. This is a very important game from his standpoint. He'll be playing Pittsburgh, Houston, and Oakland in the future. He realizes the Miami next week to boot, so he realizes that this game is an important win against the 4-6 and six ball club coming in. He cannot afford to stumble now and then expect to keep pace with Pittsburgh for the Central Division Championship. Zorn, hard to hear, shouting to his receivers. Third down, 13. Largen in motion. Largent back over the middle at the 40, 35, down to the 30. And Largent at the 25 and finally brought down to the 23. Ron Bolden, number 28, made the stop. Largent was chucked, but he broke away. And he picks up 26 yards on the play. Well, you saw Largent smile as he slapped his teammate's hand. Zorn looking over the middle as Largent went in motion, provoking single coverage right there, running right by his man, but breaking two or three tackles as he gains additional yardage. He's breaking another one there, and finally, number 27, Darden comes up, tries to make the tackle, brought down, finally inside the 25-yard line of Cleveland, and it looks as if Seattle is a little more confident. Two minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the game. They might go down to the two-minute mark. Jim Zorn is going to the sideline as the clock shows 2.07, and I believe we have reached the two-minute mark. The clock is not operating properly today. Apparently we are at the two-minute mark, as Zorn did go to the sideline, and now we have a double-check that we are not at the two-minute mark, that Seattle did call, or uh, Cleveland called a timeout. Cleveland did call a timeout. We had a little problem with the clock in the first half, but now it is correct at 2.07 remaining in the ballgame. Well, the Seattle Seahawks, who beat Oakland, San Francisco, Houston, and Atlanta, are coming back after... A very bad ball game, a disaster last week against Los Angeles, being shut out by the Rams and also going for a minus seven total yards in the game, have come back with a tremendous show this afternoon. They lost the lead, they held in there, they're back in front, and right now they are controlling the game at this point at least. We have a final now, Tampa Bay beat Detroit by a score of 16 to 14. The Tampa Bay leads the NFC Central now with a record of 8-3. and three. There are four 
NFC teams that have better than 500 records. There are eight AFC teams that have better than 500 records. And in the interleague play competition, AFC leads 28 to 10. Right now, Seattle, first down, 23-yard line of the Browns. Al Hunter met at the line of scrimmage. He saw 57 in there, Clay Matthews, the linebacker. He got about a yard. It'll be second and nine. Now we've reached the two-minute mark. So there's a timeout with two minutes remaining. And Seattle leads Cleveland in a big upset bid, 29 to 24. We'll be right back. Coming up next on NBC, most of you will see that New England-Denver game. Denver is leading 7-0 in the first quarter. Steve Grogan coming off a 350-yard game against Craig Morton's 233-yard game. So that'll be an explosion. Plenty of action left in that one. Just started. Jeff Moore at the 20. Moore at the 15. Moore's got a first down inside the 15-yard line, I believe. Jack Gregory, 81, made the tackle. Let's see where they spot the ball. He might be a little bit short as they move the ball at the 14. He didn't quite make it. Regardless, Cleveland cannot stop the clock. They are out of timeouts. Third down and short for so Seattle. It looks as if Seattle has maintained control in the fourth quarter. It looks as if Seattle right now, Moreau, will probably win the game as Coach Patera looks on a little happier than he was at the beginning of the second half. At the, end, the beginning of the second half. And in three meetings now between the two teams, Seattle has won the first two. Cleveland coming off a three-game winning streak in deep, deep trouble now. Al Hunter bangs to about the 12. That should do it. So that gives Seattle the first down. And it's first down from the 12. And the clock showing but 55 seconds left of the game. Seattle took the opening kickoff and marched 66 yards for a touchdown. Then moved on to a 16-3 halftime lead. Fell behind 17-16 to at the end of three quarters as Mike Pruitt scored two touchdowns for Cleveland. One on a 65-yard run. Then in the fourth quarter, Hunter scored from six yards up. And then he ran 71 yards to set up another touchdown, which Smith scored on. Then Sipes scored from three yards up. 29-24. And you see Jim Zorn now just sitting this one out. Well, the Seattle Seahawks should have a very pleasant ride going back to Seattle. After last week's loss to the Los Angeles Rams, as the clock runs out, and Cleveland's record will now go to 7-4, and four, while Seattle moves to 5-6. and six. So it's a tough loss for the Cleveland and a big win for Jack Patera and the Seattle Seahawks as they bounce back from that shellacking to the Los Angeles Rams and they have beaten the Cleveland Browns this afternoon by a score of 29-24. to 24. So this is one of the days, George Coons, that the Browns just couldn't quite come back in the fourth quarter. Well, they often speak of the cardiac kids as they call the Cleveland Browns in town winning the ball games in the last 90 seconds or less. Today... Liana didn't have a chance to have that happen. His defense could not stop the Seattle offense in crucial situations in the fourth quarter. But Seattle played a fine ball game. They deserved to win. Deserved to win. They scored 29 points on a fair Cleveland defense. As a result, Seattle will go back happy as you see them going in the locker room now. Cleveland will stay home, perhaps drown their sours, sour, sorrows a little bit tonight, watch a little television, come back in Monday, check the films, and go from there against Miami next week. In the yardage department, Seattle 226 yards for the pass, 178 for the run. The Browns 179 in the air and 216 on the ground. And so, most of you now will see New England and Denver, which will be coming up very shortly over most of these stations. Here in Cleveland, it was the Seattle Seahawks 29, the Cleveland Browns 24. This is Merle Herman along with George Coons, hoping you've enjoyed the action. Now stay tuned for the second half for exciting NFL doubleheader. The New England Patriots take on the Denver Broncos following the...